being a snuggle? Hi, gorgeous. You want to snug? Okay. Look at her. She's being such a little brat. She's like pawing at me. Sandals. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cat. You always have a cat. Hello, check, check, one, two. Hello, check, check, meow, meow. Three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Family Standards Podcast. My name is James Rowindy. And I'm Amanda or Mandy Cat. Beautiful, beautiful, sunny day. It's been. This is the earliest we've ever filmed the podcast. True. So if you're watching, it's going to be bright, but it's been so sunny. I don't think it's going to fluctuate a lot, which is what, like, irks me the most. Uh huh. When it fluctuates all the time, but it actually looks pretty good. Yeah. The other thing is, this window just gets super hot. So it's either morning or late night that we film here. So. Or X would be extra late night now because the sun just doesn't go away. No, it's just us. super hot and it feels decent right now. So hopefully we don't sweat too much. Yeah, we pump the AC more than we usually would. Uh, well, some people actually say they uh, they like the window because I don't know, just the vibes, like heavenly or whatever. The brightness. It's super bright. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got some a bouquet of flowers right in the center mm -hmm. james got those for me we got those guys too well we always have those guys i know it looks good together though but james got me a bouquet of flowers they're gorgeous yeah i don't <laughs> want to boast but they were just cuz flowers <laughs> i mean i have complained enough about how much i hate sorry flowers so i do love just because flowers yeah mm -hmm. every time i build the set i keep thinking about how excited i am to build our next set at our house i know <laughs> i'm just really looking forward to that me too like i want to put all my cameras and stuff behind uh, for like for storage but also for the podcast set as well that was the nice thing about the crates is we were able to like customize them a little bit but man those we'll do crates again. have seen better days we still have those damn things they're outside now they're gonna go to the dump so been in the house for years yeah but yeah we'll have a really good setup i'm looking forward to it yeah we're manifesting <laughs> all right Whoa. um oh i don't know if you guys can if you're watching on the youtube i have miss hoodie beside me and she's being so cute yeah we're filming at 11 a.m our time in the morning that's why sandals isn't behind me like he usually is because it's usually a later day thing yeah they're in their nappy yeah, it's they nap all morning. 11 to 1 is always their nappy time. Yeah, or or beyond that. Like yeah. 3, they didn't, they didn't start moving until 3 yesterday. But she's suddenly down more. Look at her. Like, I, know. I mean, she's still, oh, she's still a menace, she but uh, she mommy's naps more. Attention. She's so precious. James, right before we started, was just saying, uh, actually, might even use that as the pre-intro. You're like, I want a cat. Oh, But yeah. you always have cat. Yeah. This is a rare one for me, so. She was messing around with the bouquet and first of all you said there's lilies in there so yeah it's toxic to them and then she keeps wanting to because we usually have the the blackout blinds here mm -hmm. um so that it wouldn't be so hot here but every time we open those she's always she loves the big window here so she's always fucking around trying to get into the curtains yeah and don't don't worry guys i literally move the bouquet bouquet i don't even know how to fucking say it i move it around constantly so that it's out of the reach of the cats i only just bring it around when we're around where we can monitor that the cats aren't around because mm -hmm. yeah it's beautiful but uh, as soon as i saw the lilies i was like uh oh i didn't realize they were lilies but they're just tiny they're just a different type of lily yeah, but tiny yeah small ones they're very pretty but very toxic so yeah we're good so and just before anybody comes for us <laughs> we know and we're careful um yeah what's up we're actually like filming this recently after the last one so like not a whole lot of life updates other than we've just been enjoying our beautiful weather here and actually hitting the beach a couple times and just living our life actually oh <laughs> oh my god okay it's so playful right now okay well she's like she just keeps falling asleep but i'm petting her and then she gets a little oh. fussy i will say i actually had a bit of a mental breakdown i'm not gonna lie uh, I don't even know how long, I mean, about a week ago. And I just, I realized that uh, as much as I love being real and authentic online, sometimes it leaves me to be a lot more vulnerable to people's negativity. And I can't always 
be strong. <laughs> Usually I can brush stuff aside, but I don't know, for some reason I, I really fell into the weakness of allowing people's words to really get to me. So if anybody has noticed, I've taken kind of a step back from being as, as um, active on Instagram specifically. And honestly, I'm so much happier right now. <laughs> Uh, we actually, it's forcing us also to go back. We have so much content, like photos I've never posted, videos I've never posted. And so it's actually like forcing me to go through some of my older stuff, not even old, like within the last couple months here and post that kind of stuff. But it's been nice not, um, you know, being on my stories as much or being just as, I don't know, like online every single day. I'm sure I'll go back to it eventually. But for now, I'm actually just very excited to take July and August is kind of like our focus of focus on ourselves again and and yeah allow myself just to live my life with other people's judgment so I mean, you've been talking than. about that for a while even yeah. before your breakdown you were saying how you think you need to well, find a better balance of what that would look like yeah and that and that, that's just the uh that's just the struggle of being real mm-hmm. the struggle is amplified because we are an online presence but if, if we weren't online, I'm sure you'd be totally fine. I know. Uh, so, yeah, it's a, it's a, a hard balance. keyboard warriors, tell you what. Yeah, for sure. Ooh, sorry. But, yeah, <laughs> still online, still posting, just uh, taking a, a little step back for now. So Yeah, we're feeling pretty good. I mean, I think when we filmed the last podcast, we're pretty stressed. I think we just got back from Toronto. Yeah. And we were just really backlogged with content and yeah. pre-scheduling for Shambhala, mm-hmm, getting that all going on. Huge for us right now. We leave in a week from the day that we're filming this. So Yeah, so we've been hustling for the past week, and it's been feeling a little bit better. Yeah. I'm less stressed and overwhelmed, and I don't, I don't usually get overwhelmed, so the thought that I was overwhelmed was like, oh, shit, we have a lot to do. We just, still have a lot to do, but... Yeah. We've just been doing a lot better at, like, actually scheduling, actually sitting down, like, discussing what our day needs to look like, and actually tackling a list together, so... I definitely feel it too just better in general and mm-hmm. then yeah we always make sure to like schedule out our pages so that we can go to Shambhala and be basically hands off but I always like to give us a bit of extra time because I don't know sometimes you're just not in a good headspace when you come back from that much dopamine release so uh, I usually try to schedule like halfway into August so we've actually like surpassed that um, we obviously still post in the moment, but it's nice to have at least one or two posts a day, like pre-scheduled on like our spicy pages so that we can kind of like not worry about it as much. We've accomplished all that. And now we're just getting down to like the fun shit. Really? Well, depends how you look at it. Mm-hmm. We're filming this podcast and then, uh, we're going to film a bunch of like spicy videos today and same with tomorrow. We're going to film more spicy videos and then, uh. Yeah, yesterday we made a fucking totem, a really cool totem for Shambhala. Yeah, if you don't know what totem is, it's just a gigantic stick (laughs) to solidify (laughs) your crew, to mark where you are. So it stands up high in the air. So uh, lots of crews have a a totem uh, and just like more of a creative outlet. Um, We always say that we have everything now. Like we we have literally everything. The totem was the only thing that was missing. And not that we have a big crew going this year, but it feels nice to have a totem. We're staring at it right now. Yeah, it's huge. Like it's huge. We're lucky we have uh, vaulted ceilings in our house. I wouldn't have thought about how huge it is, but yeah. Yeah. And it's light. I'm really excited. Super light. You can tell what it is. Okay. So, I mean, there is a bit of a backstory to it. James and I last year, okay, I don't even know how to tell this fucking story. It basically goes back to last year at Trombala. Uh, There was people giving out, if you've seen us wearing the little sprouts, they're like the little green, I don't know, tiny little leafy things that people, you wear it in your hair, on your hat, like a little hair clip. Uh, People were going around sprouting people at Shams last year, and it was really fun to see how many people got sprouted because it like, you called it like a infestation? like an invasion I can't, either an infection or like just i can't remember what i call it but, but like i just it, i just said imagine being that one guy who knows it could be multiple people yeah. but imagine being the one guy that brought the sprouts to shambhala and was just sprouting everybody and then by the end of the festival you could see all the people that have sprouts yeah. and knowing that you that was like your mark that was your impact that's all the people that you kind of were involved with yeah i think that's super cool and it was one of those things that like it wasn't like people got it and then didn't wear it 
like so many people just left it like wore it for the entire festival i know i did every time i took like took it out of my hair i'd wake up and put it back in my hair the next morning so yeah i want to add just because when people were posting about that specifically on the shambhala page some people were like talking negatively about it Why? being like oh my god imagine all the trash it's going to be on the ground oh geez and so many people were like you might not have ever been in shambhala before yeah but it's spotless and people really take care and put the consideration Ooh. to not littering and and using all the trinkets in the gift giving because that's all part of it yeah as uh as a thing and not There's not just to throw it on the ground so many away. worse things to complain about than that man that's so silly people see this is this is why the internet sucks sometimes people just like to bitch about literally anything they can I thought it was beautiful and I still every time we go to raves we wear our sprouts and then it's nice to see other people sprouted because it's like it's a rave thing now it is. It's, it's a rave thing I don't know when or what year or who started it but yeah. it's definitely just a rave thing yeah I didn't get sprouted last year Shambhala but like I said before I got spotted in Mexico earlier this yeah. year and that that sprout has stayed on that hat now and it's not moving it's no. staying there and like that was how we made a friend in Mexico is because yep. she had a bunch of sprouts on her head and she was a Burning Man girl. Yeah. And then we went, while we were walking, this other younger couple saw us and was like, hey, I see your sprout there. Do you guys rave? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a... It's just a thing. It's just a thing. Yeah. So we were like, what can be our thing? Our little trinket, our little gift giving thing because we actually never really done that before either. No. And you've been in Shambhala for years. Yeah. And you've never been the person to do, kind of do that. So was, I did try years ago and it massively failed. What did you, what were you giving? So first of all, I was stupid. I wanted to do these little, um, so I ordered tiny little glass bottles. So that was my problem. <laughs> number one is yeah. that they were glass. I didn't even think about that, mm -hmm. but I put like cotton in like cotton balls inside of them. And then I would dye them like drip food coloring into them okay. and then put glitter in them and then filled them up with like a, I don't remember what I made, but a, some sort of solution that wouldn't I didn't think it would dehydrate. So it was like a glittery cloud in a bottle. And then it dehydrated? It, was, it fucking dehydrated, yeah. Uh, so it was really upsetting. How and then did you make? A lot. And it took me a long time, actually. Shit. I thought I was being so cute. And I actually wired wrapped some of them so that they were on like necklaces and stuff. I mm. was really excited. And then they all dried out. And then a bunch of people also bitched at me because they were glass. And of I was course. like, wow, I just really like fucked up drastically. So yeah. I mean, it must have been your early, early years then. It was. It was 2015, I think. It was my second yeah. Shams and I was so excited. So... Yeah, other than just giving stuff to people, there are also little, just random areas around the whole festival. Trade. Little trade stuff. Like, you take you take something, you give something. You take a trinket, you give it. Yeah. And it's just, they're all over the place. We would be giving lots of stickers, because that's all we had last year. Yeah, our Put a stickers. Sticker down, yeah. Our stickers. Uh, but now we actually have stuff, so. Oh, and I also got, like, hundreds of cool cat stickers. That, yeah, I remember that. That I'm going to also just, like, give to people and stuff. But anyway, we decided to go with windmill clips. Say that again? windmill clips <laughs> sorry you said a funny the first time windmill wind windmill clips windmill windmill wind yeah well we were browsing online for a while but honestly sprouts are s tier i don't know on the tier list of trinkets yeah sprouts are s tier yeah they look cool the wait what is an s tier you know what tier lists are shouldn't it be like top tier what's an s -tier? s is top it goes s a b c d etc S. I don't know why. Maybe A B C. Yes. D E F. Sorry. A B C D E F. So S A B C D E F. Continue. In what? What? Who? All is tier lists. This is tier lists in general. <laughs> I don't. Know, maybe it sounds for superior. What? Super. I don't know. Uh, sprouts are S tier. Uh, <laughs> the way they look, what they represent. Again, when because they're supposed to be like uh a sprout right like growing out of you it's kind of a cool concept mm. like you're a part of nature and then it's it's spreading like the seeds spread across and then you start sprouting off of your body like the concept itself is really cool uh mm. the design's really cool it's really light it's really small there's mushroom sprouts like there's all different yeah, types of sprouts really cool ones uh, like the one the lady in mexico had such cool sprouts yeah all different colors and stuff i had a hard time choosing <laughs> i know anyway so like figuring out something I mean, I don't think we, anything we would picked would have topped that or even got to that level. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So we went with... Windmills. <laughs> when I don't even know. How, I can't pronounce any... Bouquet. Bouquet. Windmill. Windmill. I don't fucking know. We went with windmills. The clip windmills. Yes. A little plastic clip like this big. The stick itself that's holding the windmills probably this big. And then yeah. the windmills are probably like... Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So yeah. they can go in your hair, they can go in your hat, they can go on your objects. I don't know. We were just thinking like what would be fun, not too big, not too obnoxious. 
Mm-hmm. I, mean, I was nervous that was going to be too big. And it still might be, but, but I don't know. We'll see. They're really light, lighter than I expected. Yeah. I've seen some people, yeah, put two and clip a two on their head so that mm-hmm. they have little ear windmills. Little antennas. And then when the wind's blowing, it, it's, like, that's it's so spinning cute. them constantly. But also, your name. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was that was a that was a afterthought. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, what are, our crew's what? Windy? We are the Windy Crew? We're the Windmill Crew? We're the Windy Crew? It kind of just makes sense. I think it just makes sense. So our totem is yeah. a giant fucking windmill. Windmill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like nine feet. That's like nine feet tall, isn't it? Uh, maybe even more. And extends it extends another feet. It can extend another feet because we kind of jimmy rigged a bottom of a tripod at the, to to the bottom of it. Yeah, so it can stand on it its own. It can stand on its own. <gasps> so we can just dance, dance around, around it, it, not hold it all night. Um, and where we extend, where we attached it, it does extend like another feet, <laughs> another foot, <laughs> which is not that you need it. Watch well, so us just already. go. Somebody come up to us and be like, "My totem's taller," and us be like. Huh. <laughs> Uh, it's super light, but we uh, we yeah. wrapped the whole. St- well, you bought a bamboo, like a I, yeah. So I bought a bamboo stick and had no idea if it was gonna work. Mm-hmm. Was testing them out in the dollar store, but then we already had the giant windmill at the house, so I was testing it with a smaller one at the dollar store and didn't know if it was gonna fit. Brought home the giant bamboo stick, and then boom, it fit. So yeah, we taped it all up, and then we went and got like silver. So it's like foil tape. Yeah, like chrome tape. Mm-hmm. So then we taped that and then we wrapped LED lights around it and then we clear taped over that. So it's super cool. It looks like it would be way heavier than it is. Yeah, it kind of looks like it's metal. Yeah. But it, yeah, taping it all together really unified the look. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty fucking pumped, man. And then the lights, because we have, we, we put two different separate lights on it. We have two different lights, colors yeah. and functions and stuff. It's and really dope. It's really lit. Like, it's lit. Our crew is not going to be able to not find us. Yeah. yeah. And... For anyone that's going to Shambhala, I was also going to like post on our socials. If you ever want to meet us, look for the windmill. Yep. Come and we have hi. windmills to give now. We have windmills to so, give. So we give you a windmill and you're part of the windmill crew. Cat stickers and our stickers because we still don't sell our stickers and we're going to have those on us too. So if you ever want to find us, look for the windmill. Keep in mind, sometimes we do hallucinogenics. I always say that. I mean, at Shambhala, not sometimes. It's all the time. Well, yeah. I just, I say that because, you know, you know how it is if you do them. Sometimes you're in a great mood to accept people. And sometimes you're like, whoa, I'm a little squirrely right now. People at Shambhala are going to understand that. I know. But I have had people approach me and I've been like, whoa, I'm like, can't even talk to you right now. So just a heads up. Okay. It's so cool. I want to grab it and kind of show it, but I know like just the tip of it. But I don't think you can. It's huge. It's so cool though. But yeah, we're not, I'm not saying like, don't approach us. Please do come say hi. I'm just pre-warning that sometimes I'm a little funny. That's all. (laughs) Yeah. So we're excited. We have a couple other like things we need to accomplish. Just pitter pattering around. And then, yeah. As I was just sitting here and we're talking about the windmills, I'm like, I'm really actually excited that I bought the bubble gun. Yeah. Because it kind of makes sense with the windmills now. Just because the bubble's blowing in the wind and mm-hmm. the windmills are kind of blowing. He had a hard time deciding if he was going to follow through with the bubble yeah, gun. Yeah, I really wanted to buy a bubble gun last... Okay, well, I really wanted a bubble gun for this year. Yeah. And it was like, you know, like after last year's Shambhala, you think about all the things you want to do for next year and you prep it all. Then you kind of forget because a year goes by and you're like, oh shit, I want to do all this. You you almost forgot that we wanted to build this toy. I did forget. Yeah, we bought these windmills like Forever l- literally right after last Shambhala. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the bubble gun, I, I really like... I don't know, man. I just like... Especially when you're partying with the crew. I, I think we're both the same. We like to make sure the vibe is really yeah. awesome for everyone that we're with. I agree. Uh, especially if it's your first time coming and stuff like that. Sometimes it can be a negative thing. But overall, when you when you can spread happiness and joy to the, to the people that you love around you, like it's so awesome. And, you know, no one has ever bought a bubble gun in our crew. No. But every time we go to the living room, especially, I don't know about the living room stage, bubbles. there's always bubbles in the living room stage and people just blowing them constantly and you're listening to the music and you see the bubbles. You're like, ah, oh, this fun. feels nice. I always have water guns because everyone's always hot. hot so I'm always fun, like yeah. spraying people with water guns. That's fun. Mm-hmm. But the bubble gun, yeah, we're, we're going to have a lot of like stuff gadgets i know fun things i need to think of all like the hollow like how am i gonna keep that bubble gun on me i need a holster for it or something like am i just gonna hold it constantly i don't know oh fuck man we'll figure it out we'll figure it out so many things all the stuffs could you imagine if we just bought one of those like big like 
wagons and just like wagoned around like all, all of our stuff. toys and just like danced around. I our mean, t- a wagon is another thing that we think we think that we should get eventually. Yeah, just, that's a, that's an expensive thing. And we also upgraded our chairs. Yeah, we, we, did, bought, we did a lot of upgrading. We do that, you know, every a few years, but we bought uh, backpack beach chairs. Yeah, because before we had just camping chairs. It's just a lot to haul down to the river every day. Yeah, so you don't realize good. how far that walk is when it's every hot. Every single time, yeah, it's a lot. And then we got a new, like, smaller portable, uh, soft bagged cooler. Mm-hmm. That one needed to be upgraded. Yeah. We went to Canadian Tire expecting to buy tape for a totem, and it ended up with three hundred dollars. <laughs> Yep. I also got a fucking clamshell floaty. Oh, I yeah. I've never been the girl to have like a really cool floaty. I don't know. I just I've, I I sometimes I feel like I'm too late to join the club. I don't know it's how to explain it. It's weird. It's like I don't want to join the club at the beginning because it's too soon, and then I feel like if I wait too long, I've like lost the opportunity to join the club. But no, anyway, the cycles always come around. I'm joining the cool floaty club. I'm gonna have an awesome holographic clamshell that I'm gonna be this gorgeous little mermaid on. I'm very excited. They were on sale too, so bonus. But yeah, that's basically what we've been up to is just prepping for Shams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, today is kind of a busy day. We're doing the podcast and then we need to get ahead on just like filming our like free videos for our OnlyFans pages. So we're going to film uh, two today and then two tomorrow. And we were trying to like think of fun things, like fun other things to film. Because obviously if we're releasing free videos every week, sometimes... We ran out of ideas uh, how to change it up. So we actually decided that we're going to start. And we did one before. uh, And then we just kind of fell off the bandwagon. We're going to do some. um, So some of the products that Pink Cherry uh, sends to us that we've either shown online or haven't shown online. um, We have done it once, but we wanted to do like more like product reviews, but like spicy version you know one where we can't show it on instagram so we're actually gonna film um today we're gonna do uh i'll, gr- I'll just grab it and show it oh she made it good job yeah so today we're gonna film with this guy this is the gawk gawk 9000 we have shown this online before and we obviously have used it uh we just haven't actually made a video where we're using it or like demonstrating or anything like that so Yeah, we're going to do that today. I'm excited. I'm I'm obviously excited. (laughs) (laughs) So I've said about these things, um, for me personally, I like being able to see through them. Like I want to see the dick through the toy. If it's like all black and I can't see it inside, I'm like, that's not very exciting for me. So when we literally just talked about the last episode, how you like watching penis. I do like watching penis. (laughs) I mean, so do I. Okay, so this thing actually like vibrates, so it has different levels of vibration. And I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot. There's different patterns, all that stuff. And then it also thrusts. Like it's twisting and it's thrusting at the same time. You guys hear that? Oh, that sounds crazy in the microphone. Oh, that's the vibration that's here. Yeah, the vibration, yeah. Okay, anyway. We're gonna make a video with this today. That was a lot. (laughs) I know that was a lot (laughs) it is a lot but yeah so that's exciting that's gonna be one of the ones and then we're gonna do probably one with me using a toy as well I just don't know which one yet so toy or the massage candle oh yeah that was the video I forgot I thought there's something else that was massage related yeah so we have have the edible edible flavored massage oil yeah I think we got like a three pack of different flavors so we were gonna do like a massage video where uh, you're massaging me and then yeah, using the edible massage oil, flavored, flavored edible massage oil. And then I really like the wax. We have a wax, uh, like a massage candle. Um, So you drip it on each other and then it turns into like massage oil while you use it. So I actually really like the feeling of wax. Uh, So we're gonna do that. And then, I don't know, we'll see. With the Gawk Gawk, I mean, we haven't, we haven't like used it lots, but I haven't used lots of like toys in general. Mm-hmm. And it was my first time actually using those toys and Pink Cherry sent them to me. So I had a hard time like just like working it and figuring it out. Uh, sometimes I feel like it was just a lot. Like we talked about earlier, it's just a lot. Even the vibration is can be good enough already, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and then with the massage, yeah, I'm, excited. I'm actually really excited for the massage. We tried the candle wax before. 
uh, what I kind of, well, I, I think I used a little the spoon that I gave, a little wooden spoon, yeah, and kind of dripped it on you. Mm-hmm. But I think it doesn't. It's not the same. I just, I want to grab the candle and, yeah, like pour it on you. Yeah, I'm excited for those. I was surprised how well the wax actually, how malleable it was after it got poured on the skin. Mm-hmm. You, I mean, you expect wax to just harden up, but it felt it felt like like actual like, actual oil. oil, yeah, like full and on oil. good oil too. It lasted for a long time and it smelled really good. I don't remember which. Which I was gonna say flavor, really which scent I got, but it smelled really, really good. But that's so. not edible. No, uh, so we would use canopy? the. Did they have anything like that? I don't think so. Hmm. But yeah, we're really excited to use those toys, and uh, maybe we'll get you uh, give you a better review of them on the next episode when we actually use them. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, if, I mean, you'll get the best review, obviously. That's true. <laughs> on our OnlyFans, because yeah, we're gonna post that. those videos for free. Uh-huh. So and people again really did like the one we used the womanizer on you. Yeah, uh, I it's it's a womanizer something I can't remember womanizer I don't remember. something, and people on our spicy sites actually said they really they really enjoyed that. So mm-hmm. we're gonna give you guys more of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, plus, I think it's gonna be really fun to just experiment with different toys and stuff uh, on each other. Yeah, I agree. Also, I actually don't know if we're allowed to like post our promo codes or anything on our OnlyFans. I feel like OnlyFans is so fucking weird when it comes to that kind of stuff so anyway if you watch any of the stuff and you decide you like the toys and you want to find it you can find them on pinkcherry.com or pinkcherry.ca use our code family p-h-a-m-i-o-y at checkout and you'll get the best discount available and we appreciate you very much for doing so because it benefits us as well (laughs) that's basically it yeah okay I guess we're going to hop into um, q and A. I I just picked a hair out of my eye and I still feel like... At least you're prepped with a... I know, I brought a Q-tip. I swear, this is what happens because I was petting hoodie the whole time. I think it's just like... I don't know. There's just shit going on. I feel it. I feel stuff. So if I'm picking at my eye this whole episode, like apologies in advance. Cat life. But yeah, we're backed up with questions because we are supposed to answer questions last episode, but we spent the more of the time answering those emails. Uh, so we have a lot of yeah. questions from you guys. Yeah, we do. I also asked some for today as well. So mm. so there's extra. Okay. Well, I'm going to backtrack it then to the Q&A that we did um, on Family Standards podcast two weeks ago, I guess, like when we were filming uh, and then we didn't get around to answering these ones on Instagram. So let's just do that. Also, James and I decided that we're going to be less fussy if... We've answered questions before. Yeah. Because obviously some of you guys come in at different times. And we and can't expect everyone to listen to every episode. And we honestly don't even... We could even direct you to which episodes what to listen to the questions. So, uh, if you're a, If you're a, a long-time listener, some things might be repetitive. Yeah. Uh, so, do you ever get tired of carrying the vibe all the time? looking oh. good yes oh that vibe looks are i guess just overall but yes overall just carrying the vibe yeah, yeah absolutely course. it it can be a lot i think everyone online would agree yeah i think you saw it i think i used to see it on youtubers a lot back in the day because youtube was the first big platform to mm. like really blow up in that kind of sense and you just see that some so many youtubers just fizzle out because they carry a certain character or energy the re- youtubers are very high energy and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know and and then they lose themselves a little bit and then they can't do the content anymore so it's hard because i i've been sitting here preaching the whole time about how like being real online is easier and better and it's you know all these things but like after my most recent meltdown where i just couldn't handle like people coming at my actual self because i was taking it so harsh i was like almost wishing that i was one of the people that was more just like a fake character online because then it probably wouldn't hit me as hard so it's interesting thinking about both sides of that uh when it comes to being a content creator but yeah it's a lot carrying the vibe no matter what whether you're being yourself or whether you're being a character it's just it can be very exhausting so yeah there's obviously just a balance that you need to find and every balance is different per person yeah and then it comes to a point where it's not just carrying a vibe online now that you know not that we're like super well known in the entire world but like you have to carry yourself a certain way mm-hmm. because potential people potentially know who we are as people and mm-hmm. it definitely i mean it's affected me in regards of how i interact with some people um yeah. when i meet people for the first time you yeah. know yeah definitely tips for sexual confidence i'm 
aching to bring my fantasies to life, but get so dang anxious. Hmm. I guess it just depends on where are you lacking. If it's just trying stuff, like it's hard to know if if this person's referring to like just them or if them with partners. Cause yeah, it's not it's hard, saying it's not anything. Specifying. For me personally, the first thing I thought about was with it was with my physical body. Right. Like when I started getting into shape, that definitely increased my confidence in the bedroom as well. Mm-hmm. Or just overall confidence, I guess, mm-hmm. in regards of how they're saying it. With It sounds like they wanted to have experiences, whatever their experiences or fantasies are. Mm-hmm. I think being confident means having people that you can trust Yeah. in those experiences. Yeah. People that make you feel safe. Exactly. Uh, when you talk about those things. Uh, yeah. Sexual confidence, I think... I think in general, just confidence, you just have to love yourself. So sexual confidence for sure. Like you just, you have to love yourself. And even if your body isn't like exactly the perfect body in your mind, like you still have to learn to appreciate the body that you're in and that you're given and what it does do for you. And and once you can learn to love yourself more is where the confidence really kicks in. And that's also in the bedroom. So yeah, you said the whole love of yourself when we were talking about self-esteem last episode. And it's funny that I didn't really, it's funny that that wasn't one of the first things that came to my head because uh, Woman Wonderless said the same thing when she was on our episode of the podcast. And it's it's true though, like the more you can love yourself, the more you can love others, the more other people can love you. Mm-hmm. And then those, that's just all good feelings all around. And there's, there's no negativity once you get to that point, mm-hmm. uh, which means there shouldn't be any judgment, which means confidence shouldn't be, our lack of confidence shouldn't be a big thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My boyfriend and I want to try threesomes, but I don't know how to feel comfy in that space. Help. Well, I mean, good for you guys that you've talked about it and you want to. How to feel comfy in this space. That's a tough one. I'd say it's the same thing we say all the time. Have open and constant communication, but you're only going to get comfortable if you're once you're doing things, once you experience it. Mm -hmm. Because you can talk about all, and this is like anything in life, you can talk about anything all the time, but if you don't actually do stuff and take action and experience things, you're not going to actually feel what the things are going to feel like. So as long as you both are comfortable with the idea, like you said you are, about having a threesome, just keep that open dialogue there and then experience it. Mm -hmm. I honestly, like even now, if we're going to have a threesome with somebody new, I wouldn't ever say that it's comfortable right off the hop, right? It's a new experience. It's like if you were to try a new activity for the first time, if you were to go bungee jumping for the first time, if you were to, no matter what, it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's why it's exciting. So I would just say like you and your boyfriend need to have open communication together before, during, especially during and after, and also just talk with the third and also say, just be open. We're not 100% sure how this is going to go. We need to have open communication during this and and all know that if if anyone's not having a good time, say so and it's okay. But yeah, if you don't have that communication going into it and you do become uncomfortable, I feel that people get stuck in not speaking in those moments, which is what's going to make the experience bad. Mm -hmm. You can be uncomfortable and say so and have everybody react in a good way and change it and Mm -hmm. then feel comfortable. But if, you stuck in, if you're stuck and you're uncomfortable and you're not saying anything, that's going to be a bad experience and you're probably not going to want to do it again. So, yeah. Again, and that's with anything in life. If you get stuck in your own head and your own dialogue starts, starts getting bad in your own head and you don't discuss it out loud, well, you're going to be overthinking things, anxiety builds up. And in this scenario, maybe jealousy will build up. Like yeah. You don't know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, talking with everyone that's involved and also like choosing the third person you know, carefully or Mm -hmm. have interactions with this person. Make sure this person is someone someone that you guys are really willing to to do this with Mm -hmm. and making sure everyone's on the same page. But yeah, like you said, just because you do it all the time, it doesn't mean those feelings aren't there. Yeah, you might get comfortable in certain things because Mm -hmm. you've you've done it before, but it's a different person. It's a new personality. It's a whole new experience in a way because of that. It's like bungee jumping. I don't know, man. I've never been bungee jumping, but I could say... Just because you do it an X amount of times, it's probably still going to be just as exhilarating and nerve wracking mm-hmm. jumping off of that platform. Mm-hmm. It's some things you just can't get comfortable with. Exactly. You have to you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable and push push beyond it. You also don't know what's going to occur. 
you can have all the conversation and you should for sure all yep. of you should be having the conversations beforehand what you're comfortable with what you're not comfortable with anything could happen there's stuff that can happen that you wouldn't have even thought of and so you just need to be confident in yourself to be able to say if in an exact moment you have something that doesn't feel good just say so mm-hmm. you don't like a position that's happening or you feel excluded in a moment just just say it yeah it's fine change it up if you don't like that they're making out solo and you're on the side like be like hey guys like over here can we switch it, it up ha- like it definitely can happen can. especially in a threesome specifically three is a hard Mark, number three is a hard number uh i also want to add depending on what your comfortability is like maybe having the third be more experienced might be good for you unless you want the third to just be like newbie with you guys you guys can all experience it together that could work too depending on what you're comfortable with but obviously having someone that has more experience in it mm-hmm. uh, can help with the situation yeah in general i think people just need to be more comfortable like talking during sex yeah in, like, g- in general that's in not, general that's not even with threesomes just yeah. totally in just general just say what you want i know um <laughs> so what did, i heard something recently oh this is kind of like beyond it but kind of related so, you know some people have a hard time just looking people in the eyes directly yeah and I that, do. that's too much for people and yet you can fuck people without even looking at them and saying anything yeah you know sex, sex is supposed to be one of the most intimate things yeah and yet we're not even like feeling intimate uh in in that way so mm-hmm. um the fact that people can't even feel like they can talk during sex that's wild that's so wild to me mm-hmm. like are you even having sex then mm-hmm. you're just going through the motions your eyes are basically closed Mm -hmm. at that point you Mm -hmm. know that's wild very wild that's a good point you added thanks (laughs) rave life hacks Mm. Mm. a (laughs) leave that's what i was told i have a hard time feeling pain medication in general but i do feel like the leave helps um just with aches and pains aches and pains like and yeah we're getting old or whatever but it's more of this fact that we dance our asses off all day all night especially when we dance all day <laughs> like oh we're big like uh well we head bang i head bang a lot i move my um torso torso up a lot mm. so i'm bent over i'm hinging at my waist a lot and yeah, my low, low back. back ends up feeling it a lot throughout my the night. knees i get real low into like a deep squat my knees by yeah, the end yeah, of it i'm like yeah. oh so yeah a leave totally that's the one reason i have the cane i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it gets Uh-oh. more use later in the night <laughs> my other thing and like people can agree or not with this but um i've been doing shambhala since 2014 just pay for the food at the festival like, yeah, you, you've bring, been thinking about that more lately yeah br- like bring snacks bring like i bring uh protein bars like protein the boost shakes light stuff muffins stuff that doesn't go bad as quickly but i used to like pack everything to cook and to be making food and i don't know man it's you don't just, got time it's, for that it's effort it's fucking yeah. hot your yeah. cooler's always melting you and don't want to cook half the time you don't have an appetite exactly because yeah. they're yeah you're having too much fun yeah <laughs> so i just i'm like you know it's what it's easier it's 20 bucks for a chicken caesar wrap yep i'm gonna fucking get that chicken caesar wrap at two in the morning and honestly that's even nicer sometimes because after we get off the dance floor it's two three four a.m mm. and the vendors right there you're like i'm hungry let's grab some boot grab a bite sit Line down and eat. down take your time yeah yeah it's instead nice. of going back to camp yeah. busting out the cooler busting out these things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah That's i mean if you can afford it i guess if you can afford eating there more often then but do really it. the amount of money that i used to spend on stocking the cooler and See then the amount. food that would get wasted yeah. was a lot and like i'm not you're we're not eating three meals a day when we're festivaling like mm-hmm. you, you bring snacks you bring fruit you bring a bunch of other stuff but you like, bring salad rolls and have uh <laughs> have uh have uh what do you call it a plant ceremony plant ceremonies <laughs> that's an inside joke you guys would know about if you listened to last, last year's. year's episode but yeah those are like my i guess the main ones uh, uh i'm sure i have a lot it also depends on what rave you're talking about because like we're talking about shambhala we're which is a camping, camping rave yeah so camping rave is so different than just going out to a rave mm-hmm. for a night Oh, I bring a, this is a big one for me. Um, we sleep in a trailer, like a tiny, we have a tiny trailer, not a bougie trailer. When people, when people say that, they're like, ah. We it's from tini- the 60s, Like It's an 70s, old fucking maybe. trailer. It's a cute little thing. It's our little fairy. Safe haven. Fairy safe haven. I bring a stand-up tent to put our stuff in. And I, I bring a fucking roll rack and I hang all my outfits boom you have a tent you can get up 
you can closet. stand in you have it. A, you can change in it and everything. Yeah. And it's great. Uh, yeah, I highly, that's like my, when people are like, what do you mean you have a trailer and a tent? I'm like, you shut your mouth. Shut it. Oh, and we have a, we bought a carport garage thing, like a 20 by 10 stand up carport. Obviously you don't have to go that big, but that's what we bring as our shade shelter. Yeah. The living, the living room. Essentially. We call it our living room. Yeah. And it's lovely cause it's, you need some shade. So again, this is very Shambhala specific. Yeah some good additions to the heat thing we have like a uh, hairdresser mister sprays oh, the yeah. ones that constantly pressurize. spray though pressurize so you spray it and it keeps going Ugh. that's really a godsend too yeah because like lots of people have those like those little dinky fan blower things that have yeah, those no, don't really those work the good. the um the big misters are really good and hairdresser then, bottles hairdresser yeah. bottles yeah get those and then we we have big fans that we have too so it's kind of creating the same thing big fan and, and that for heat mm-hmm. um, essential oil yeah for always smells. pack a little thing of an essential oil, whether it's a roll-on or just like a, a dabber. Because whether it's you who's stinky or somebody else who's stinky, it's just nice to have an essential oil to be able to like put on and feel better. Yeah. So. I put it right on my mustache. Yeah. So that it Sometimes stays. it's people that stink and sometimes it's what people are doing that stinks. If you know what I mean. But yeah. What else is there? Oh, there's a little bit more. I'm sure there is, but like... That could be a whole episode all on its own. Festival yeah. prep. I actually like the fact that we were getting asked that. It just shows that mm-hmm. you guys know that we rave. Ooh, it's <laughs> rave season. Oh, yeah, I thought there was a little bit more, but... I mean, necessity is a different thing. Necessities yeah. are a different thing. Hacks are different things. But when it comes to just increasing the vibe, that's a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, we basically go early. We camp for the whole, like, seven seven days. And we, like, turn our camp into, like, a beautiful living room that we enjoy being in. So... We obviously bring a lot of stuff, but you don't have to be that way. Mm-hmm. But considering I've been going, it's 2024 and I started in 2014. So I haven't been 10 times, but like over the course of 10 years, I feel like I'm a vet at this point, right? Like mm-hmm. I've mastered the art of what to bring. So yeah. And yeah, but just be nice. But everyone, yeah. everyone is kind of nice. The first time I experienced raves beyond festivals, everyone in the community it was just so nice so mm-hmm. i'm excited to go back there and just feel the warmth and and feel the non-judgment i'm super excited to be same. surrounded by that again same okay moving on partner is weaponizing mental health so i won't leave how to tell if they're weaponizing or actually need help wow that's i mean that's hard without having more detail you know so i mean if they're actively seeking help, that's how you know they're, that's, you know what I mean? That's like, the thing. If, if they're not seeking help other than saying it to you yeah. and telling you they need help, but they're yeah. not actively seeking help themselves. Yeah. And that's, that's a problem. Yeah. If you're, if they're just saying, I'm not doing good, yeah. I'm not okay. Yeah. And that's the only thing that happens. And then say you reassure them, you try to talk to them. Maybe they talk mm-hmm. to you. Maybe they don't. But if they don't actually seek any help moving forward and they just repeat the process of like, I'm yeah. not doing good. Yeah. Oh, I'm acting this way because I'm mentally not well. Or, oh, I treat you bad because I'm not doing well. No, that's weaponized incompetence for sure. Yeah. But we don't know. We don't know enough details. No. Like, you know. But I would say like, do as a partner, do your, do your do best your to help them get help exactly because obviously sometimes it's hard when you're in that position to actually actively seek the help yourself Mm -hmm. so if your partner's saying to you like i need help help them get the help yeah you can only do that much once you push them in that direction help them get appointments or find a a therapist or whatever they need if they're not following through with it after that that's not on you yeah Um, ask them what they need like ask them what do you feel like you need and if it's just a conversation with you maybe that's something that you can provide for them at least temporarily But yeah, we don't, we don't, it's hard to answer without knowing all the details. Yeah. But if this is like an ongoing long-term thing and it's affecting your life and you've tried to get them help and they haven't done that and it's just this vicious cycle, I, I don't think that that's a situation you should have to stay in personally. People need to want to help themselves. Have you ever tried shibari or other rope related constraints? What was your experience or do you want to try? I've never tried it. Yeah, we never tried it. I can't say I'm necessarily interested in it. I think it's beautiful yep. to look at. I personally don't enjoy being, I don't know how to say this. 
first of all, I have so much anxiety about having to pee that the idea of not being able to get out of something for a certain length of time, like that's not a quick process, right? It's usually quite a long thing, would just panic me altogether. Um, I don't really like being like pain being inflicted on me. I like the candle wax and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of pain for the most part, especially on like my butt. I really don't like that. So I just don't think I would love to be tied up personally. Yeah, I feel like I don't think about this. It's not a want, but from what I've heard from other people that enjoy it, the way they express it sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. Like the way they say like, oh, when I'm there and I'm just feeling everything. In a way, it's kind of like a weird meditative yeah. meditative sexual kind of state pain pleasure meditation feelings um so hearing people like like talk about what their experiences are like kind of intriguing it sounds like they're in a really interesting place of bliss mm. but it's not like i i would i don't think about wanting to do it but it does when i hear people talk about it I'm like oh good for you that's a little bit intriguing so it's interesting that people and i, I hear what you're saying it's like how some people that run say they get like runners, runners high. high. I felt it one time and it was great. Uh huh. I have felt it. It was great. It was short lived because yeah. eventually I couldn't breathe. But I get what they're saying with this. I almost feel like that's kind of how I feel sometimes when I get tattooed for long periods of time. Mm -hmm. Like you like surrender to the pain and then you have to like overcome it mentally and there's like something euphoric about it. Yes. Yep. So I like I get it. I just. You have to want it enough to, to get into it, you know? Maybe I would have to try it. Maybe I, if it I mean. was like a place that, you know, professionals did it to you, maybe I would do it that way. Because I feel like it has to be one of those things you have to be in it to really understand what it's like. Well, and I don't know that I would want to go through the process of like learning it brand new. I feel like if somebody who was really good at rope I can tying, barely tie a knot, man. I know, right? <laughs> if somebody who was really good at it just like did it on me rather quickly and I could experience it. But if I had to go through the process and the time of like learning it with somebody for the first time, I don't know that there's I would There's levels have... to it though. Yeah. Like if you wanted to be a an entry level, there's levels to it. You don't have to be tied up hanging, spinning or anything like that. Like there's, um, there's levels to it that I'm sure wouldn't be so time constrictive as well. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's beautiful though. Mm -hmm. I really do. But yeah, I don't know. We're just not big on pain when it comes no. to a sexual pleasure. No. Which is funny because like I have a pain, high pain tolerance and I do inflict beautiful self-inflicted pain. I just don't really refer it sexually. Um, how did y'all meet? Short and, short and sweet? Yeah, we get that a lot though. We met in college, massage therapy college. Mm -hmm. We were fuck buddies mm -hmm. for a handful of months. And then we were, then we went beyond that. Mm -hmm. And that's been it since. Yeah. Do you enjoy pegging? And how could I get you to pegging me for my first time? Uh, I do enjoy pegging. I actually just enjoy... I enjoy being a top. I enjoy dominant energy over submissive people. I don't know. There is something really special about pegging a man. It just... Well, it increases that role. Yeah. But it also bit. feels, um, and not I don't even have to be in a dominant role or like have them being submissive to me. There's just something like extra special about the trust that comes with that as well. It just, yeah, it feels like a, a whole nother window or door has been opened in the in the sexual world. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. Uh, how can you get me to peg you for your first time? You can't. I'm just going to leave it right there. Just to add another layer to it. Like, and that's why when when I become dominant over you, like really dominant over you and sometimes when we have sex, mm -hmm. knowing that so many people love getting dominated up by you, it's kind of like, it's just another layer of like, oh, this woman is so powerful. She's so strong. She, she, she's such a dominant for other people. Uh, it feels in a weird way to be special, to be dominant over you even mm -hmm. at those times. I see that. Yeah. But then we've also I've experienced more where you're dominating over me. Mm -hmm. That's been happening a little bit more lately where you're we choking like it. me. We like both. Yeah. We like both for sure. Yeah. Have you been to Granada? Granada? I don't know what that is. It looks like Canada, but with a GR. Granada. I don't know where that is. I'm sorry. Well, obviously we haven't been. Spain. Oh. I I'm would love to go to Spain though. I've never been to Spain. Spain would be really cool. I would definitely have to get my Spanish down packed. <laughs> it's funny because Granada sounds like cheese to me. Granada. I don't know why. 
Uh, are you planning on starting a family? No. Absolutely not. Even though our title and name is Family Standards, yeah. we are not having a family. No. Yeah. James is got a vasectomy also. Uh-huh. And uh, with how the world is going lately, I'm heavily considering asking my doctor to fertilize, uh, poo, not fertilize, uh, sterilize me as well. So definitely not. It's actually interesting because yesterday when we were making our totem for Shambhala, I literally said out loud, I'm so glad that we live a life where we can be children still instead of having children. And that's just genuinely how I feel. Yeah, you said like, I'm so excited that we're living life where I can be I can be an adult but act like a child and not be an adult with a child. Yeah. I think that's how you said it. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. It's true and though. Not saying that if you have children, you can't still be a child sometimes. It's just like you, but you're a parent role like it's very yeah. different you have you have responsibilities now it's, more responsibilities it's common that like multiple times a week i will say out loud like i'm really happy with the decision we chose like i yeah. don't i don't regret the decision at all uh, we said when i approached 30 we'd make the final decision but it's been like a final decision for over a year now for sure so i mean as soon as i got my vasectomy yeah which yeah. i should get being i should f- get my results back to see if i'm fully sterilized mm-hmm. <laughs> uh and then we went, when we went camping with my family when we were hanging out with my nephews our yeah. nephews yeah you were like oh you had some realizations you're like man i'm just i'm almost as childish as they are <laughs> at times oh yeah yeah <laughs> you were like you're like, well, were we all just born that way? And then society kind of molded us to become less like children. Okay, you know? so if you're going to tell the story, we need to, we need some backstory to this. Sure, so ahead. like the kids were playing in the dirt and just making sounds. Like they were just like, meow. Well, nephew meow, likes to like, meow like cats. Yeah, meow, just randomly. And they're not looking at the adults for attention. Like they're literally just, just doing it, playing and making sounds. And I'm somebody that makes sounds all the fucking time. Like I have sound effects to doing shit all the time. Um, And I've always thought that maybe I was weird for that. But then I said out loud, like looking at everybody, I'm like, so I'm the weird one for making sounds out loud. But look at these children who are not even attention seeking that are just making sounds. Like what happened to us that made us stop making random sounds for enjoyment? Because I still do it adulthood society being judged by other people so am i the weird one for making sounds no, the weird one are the people that judge people for doing stuff like that that's yeah. that's that's the truth but what what do we always try to say especially for you know our journey in life is to feel like a child again people always say unleash my inner child mm-hmm. that's all it really is to go back to that because that's mm-hmm. what's more important mm-hmm. i just feel like a child still i don't know i'm not ashamed about that i just i have fun yeah i'm fucking we're literally going to be those like cooler, fun aunts and uncles from yeah. them growing up. Yeah. I'm like constantly playing in the bathtub with our cat. Like, I love that shit, man. So anyway, yeah, no, no kids. How did you become comfortable with being vulnerable in front of a camera? Just doing it. Yeah. It wasn't comfortable at first. You feel awkward. Yeah. You're not sure how to act. It's also, it is weird trying to be sexual by yourself let's say in front of a camera where you're trying to like talk to the camera as if it's a person unless you just love that dynamic yeah it takes it takes some practice for sure i think it's the same as people that post on social media in general that are talking to the camera Mm -hmm. but it's they're talking to you but they're talking to the camera it just takes practice you feel awkward at first it's just how it is but then you do it and you post it and you get positive reinforcement for it or people you know buy your content or view it and they say it was great and then you're like oh well there we go you just gotta do it man yeah that's all we say even like when you would post stuff about your tattoos your tattoo artist like oh my god you're so good at that why because you do it and you've been doing it Mm -hmm. right and then when they try to do it they're like i feel so awkward but we were all there yeah even this podcast our first episode hella awkward it's awkward <laughs> you know Totes. when people come on our podcast for the first time they're so nervous i'm like why are you so nervous and i think back to our first episode i'm like oh, okay oh. i get it i yep. get it a little bit yep definitely are you guys jealous sometimes yes jealousy is a very normal emotion to feel yep 100 percent uh we we've talked a lot about jealousy so we're not gonna like dive into that too much but, but the answer is yes the answer is yes and the answer is that's normal mm-hmm. did you ever think this is what you do when you grew up 
maybe for you sometimes yes I not like am. not a podcast specifically and and but i yeah i i i don't know so I always, maybe I said this before, but like when I was younger in grade nine uh, and we were having like the career talk, like a, the principal came in, had like a talk about careers for us. And they were like, you know, when you guys grow up, there's going to be hundreds and thousands of jobs that don't even exist yet. Mm. And I always thought when I sat there, I'm like, okay, well, if there are jobs out there that I don't even know about yet, that aren't even created yet, why the fuck am I in school trying to become something <laughs> when mm. I don't even know? When there's so many to, left to know. And this is exactly one of them. Being a yeah. content creator. Yeah. This was not a job when we were in grade nine. Yeah. You know? And, and now think, all of a sudden AI. Boom. Yeah, that's everything. a whole other market. So. No, definitely did not think that we're going to be content creators. Yeah. I mean, I just was like, I was like hypersexual when I was younger. Um, I don't know why. I found like, I found it to be very powerful. Uh, and like I love Playboy Bunny stuff and I yeah I don't know I think I just thought I was gonna I don't know be one of those girls I didn't really know like to what degree but yeah I just I kind of figured I would end up doing something like this eventually so and then I always say like I kind of always loved doing videos I've, 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 yeah. I, I have an old YouTube channel with my one buddy I, I used to edit videos of tricking and post it online like I always loved that kind of thing and I've always wanted to become like a, like a YouTuber in a weird way yeah. but I never thought it would be possible mm -hmm. right just just like aspirations but yeah it's all happening now which is pretty surreal yeah are you making it to Shams this year <laughs> absolutely I think I freaked people out by saying that uh this by, is gonna be last year or whatever or no by posting the tickets for sale oh yeah, people yeah. were like oh my god you're not going makes sense no no we just had extra tickets for friends who can't come anymore so we will definitely be there look for the windmill windmill if you weren't in the porn industry what would have been your main job we've also talked about this before it'd probably just be your old jobs yeah I mean mostly yeah, it probably would. Um, I don't know if I would have stayed restaurant industry. I kind of always had it in me. So like if I would have continued with massage therapy, which I never did, but the goal with that was to actually become a massage therapist who dealt with um, like breast issues. So like moms, what is the word? Oh, moms with like mastitis, uh, breast cancer patients that had to have a double mastectomy, like that kind of stuff. I just really wanted to get into an area of it that felt like it was not, I don't know, there was room for it to grow that would benefit people. That was kind of the path that I wanted to get into, like working with cancer patients and stuff like that. But then there was also always part of me that th like wanted to do like sex education to some degree, sexual education for women. I don't know. There was always kind of like that part of me that was really interested in it. Ever since I worked at the the sex store downtown here actually, um, when I had to like help people learn about sex toys that like were so much older than me and had no idea anything about their own sexual health. So, uh, that kind of sparked a lot of, you know, me wanting to get into all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, maybe I would have done something like that eventually. Yeah. I don't know where I would be cause I was already kind of, well, I was kind of hating massage, but I was doing both this and massage at the same time. But even before we started this, even the path of massage was getting my head to a, a dark place of like not, not being able to help some clients, you yeah. know, not being able to help clients with chronic pain. That felt really weird to me having to feel like I had to learn so many new techniques just to like help people. But then when I got to that pain course that really like opened my eyes and I was yeah. actually really intrigued by that. So I'd probably pursue something massage wise, but in regards of like pain science. Yeah. But I always cater to like athletes because we're, we're athletes and we work out and I always cater to like that kind of demograph. Um, but yeah, I just care about people, especially with chronic pain. Um, mm -hmm. um, that's basically it. In regards of like, is that what we wanted to do? I couldn't tell you, but that's what our path was leading. Mm -hmm. What advice to other couples can you give about wanting to bring others into the bedroom? Oh, well, I feel like we kind of already, I think we already did I think that. We did that, yep. Great. See, lots of people are, I mean, we get that asset a lot, to be honest. Lots of people, that's like a big, a big yeah. question people always ask. Definitely. I'm divorced and in a new relationship. And thanks to you guys, I feel comfortable asking all the sex questions. Nice. That's so nice. I'm assuming it didn't happen lots in your old relationship, which mm. is probably why I created the divorce. So I'm happy that you're creating that change for yourself in the new one. It, I mean, it, it is easier to start strong, start strong than to make big changes down the road but sure. not saying that you can't you yeah. absolutely can We've make done changes that. exactly so 
happy for you. And also, thanks for telling us that. Cause yeah, that's, that's awesome. super sweet. Are you both bisexual? I am pansexual. I truly don't care what genitals you have or what you go by. It really doesn't matter to me at all. Yeah, I think like, I know labels are important when we say this too, but like, I, I, I just, I vibe with whoever I vibe with. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's been mostly women. There's been a handful of guys that have been like, hmm, they're cool beyond just like a cool way <laughs> you know but i don't i'm the same with you like we just have a harder time being interested in men yeah. but we're but we're interested in men but there's not many men that interest us you yeah. feel the same way yeah so, yeah so we're both on the same page in that kind of sense yeah but i would say i'm pansexual too like i just pansexual just haven't explored sexual with men mm-hmm. but open-minded open-minded to, to it if it feels it. right yeah yeah and it just again hasn't really felt right with anyone in particular yeah fair enough but except for that one guy in that in the series we watched <laughs> i don't want to talk about the series because it's you know, different but every once in a while there'll just be like somebody that'll spark james's interest a little bit and be oh like hey. if that guy was real life i'd be so into him yeah <laughs> and it's cute so <laughs> what's your favorite part about your job the freedom yeah but it's also like a uh it's yeah it's it's good and it's bad it's a coin toss sometimes but i'd say that yeah i think for the most part for me it's just like yes sometimes the freedom can feel like a burden because you have to keep yourself on track and sometimes you know you can't but like when we talk to people i just talked to somebody that i know at the gym actually and they were like oh you're going to shambhala and i was like yeah for sure and you know they were like oh man i wish i was but um like i can't i already had to take time off for like a sister's wedding and then i have like a costa rica one week trip so that's like my two weeks holiday for the whole year and i was like Shitty damn I forget, of time. I forget that that's how people live yeah exactly monday to friday or or other saturday you know some people do the whole tuesday to saturday thing get sunday monday off whatever yeah, but, but like, the average person gets one week of vacation time in a year isn't it two average oh. i'm just saying average one okay. it could okay. be three it could be four depending on how long you work for right. sometimes people get more on it but i'm just saying average one two it's whatever crazy. that's still nothing that's it's crazy to me so to know that we can go to shambhala for the whole time you whole know we, we don't have to yep. show up late or yep. show up we can go as early as we want leave as late as we want yeah and went, still do whatever else in the year we want and then we were in mexico or this january and then all the other traveling that we do that we can just go whenever we want we went camping midweek Yep. when no one was camping because we can go camping on yeah. a tuesday to thursday i always say we're always the youngest people around anywhere we go because Every time of that we go reason. grocery shopping at yeah. like you know 10 a.m times. on a wednesday it's all old people and then us and yeah yeah i mean it, this it's just having the freedom yeah but with freedom come great responsibilities mm-hmm. i used to joke every year because every job that i had i would request time off for shambhala and I basically would say to them, like, listen, like, you're either going to accept it or I'm not going to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there'd be times when I would be new at a job. I remember when I got hired at the restaurant that I used to work at for the very first time. Mm-hmm. And it was something that, like, on my second interview, when we were, like, discussing stuff, it. I said, if I get this job, this is, like, un- unquestioned, need this time off. Like, it was a in my clause of hire. <laughs> Um, and I think I did that even when I became a manager too. I was like, listen, I get that I'm like the bottom of the totem pole here, but I'm getting this time off or I will be out of a job, period. So. And those are hard conversations to have. Yep. Especially when it comes to your talking to your bosses. I've had struggles with that. Oh yeah. Having to tell my boss being like, I don't feel happy about this. I want to change this. Yeah. Like that's a hard conversation to have. Even our buddy that's coming with us. To Shambhala this year had to request time off. Yeah, and the, his Wasn't sure. his job was telling him anyone that requests time off right now is basically gonna get fired. Mm-hmm. Like how crazy is that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never lost a job over it, thankfully. But I don't know, man. I can't imagine being told no. Like the the concept of being told no now by somebody just like enrages me deeply. It's just crazy to to feel like someone other than you are a close relative or it's a family. controlling your life. Exactly. Why? Exactly. Like you're, you're that chained up. Yep. It's wild. Yeah. So anyway. Not. Freedom. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, who is your Mount Rushmore of talent you want to work with? 
I think I saw this question pop up too. I'm just like, I don't talk about people in that way. We, we don't. We don't even think about people in that way. No. It's like we see people online and they're hot or they're cool or whatever. You're like, oh, it'd be cool to work with you, but it's not like I want to work with you so bad. Mm-hmm. You know. It's also like um. I'm just going to use Jessie Switch because she's somebody who like preaches this a lot. When people do, when she does the question boxes, people are always like, oh, who's your top five people you want to work with? And she's like, I just don't find this classy. Like, I just don't find it like attractive to be a content creator and then to have people, I don't even, I might not be using her words right. So like apologies, Jessie, if I'm not, but she basically just always denies talking like that she's like i can appreciate people but i'm not gonna go and be like this is my number one person that i really want to fuck like that's weird uh so that's how i feel about it too also and this sucks to say but um i feel like it's better to not put people on such a high pedestal mentally because often if you do that and then you meet people you get like let down almost (laughs) that's sad to say but like it's true people are just everyone's just a human being so like take them off Take them off this pedestal that you've built them on. It's just better that way, I think. Do you guys have a normal sex life outside of videotaping it where it's not acted out, etc.? Is it as intimate? It's more intimate. Yeah. It's I more. mean, happy to think that. I mean, I don't know if you watch our spicy stuff, yeah. but happy to think that you you feel that way. But definitely, it's always more intimate when the camera's not rolling. Yeah, hundred percent. And of course, we do. Yeah it's up and it's down it ebbs and it flows especially yep. with me and my everything but yes i also have to say i feel like my so i don't know what happened i've been thinking about this a lot lately but i just feel like my my libido has gotten down a bit i wonder if it's just because of me i don't know because of you i don't because i'm fucking over 30 now my mm. testosterone's are at all time low <laughs> i don't know what it is but uh but also like and this is kind of a me thing too like you know we've been talking lots about work and like getting work sorted uh it's like there's not enough room in the brain to even think about Mm. um sex as much because we're just so so we're trying our best to improve our work and our 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 stuff like that so i feel like yeah when i think about it sometimes i'm like has my libido gone down it's hard to really know but Mm. i mean i've talked a lot on here in general the past like two years my libido has been up and down and up and down and um all over the place obviously depending on like mental health and just everything in general but um I do find that I typically am not just randomly horny. I've said that before. I feel like I have to start something and then it kicks in. But I'm not typically just like, oh, boom, I want to have sex. Like, it's not really. What's that called again? Spontaneous. Oh. Spontaneous desire, spontaneous sex or whatever. So I've been feeling low on that as well. The spontaneous. Yeah. I've always had higher that than you, I think. And I feel like that type of sex has been low because even the past few times we've had sex, like, yeah, we we, we talk about it. Yeah. Hey, I want to have sex. I want to make love with you. I want to have sex with you. I want to have some intimate time with you. Mm -hmm. But it still takes a while to really really feel it again. Ignite. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I feel like lately for us too, it's been more of like a having to really connect when we have sex again and not just not just be feral not just be wild but again ebbs and flows we'll have moments of that we'll just like have the craziest mm-hmm. fa- most feral sex yeah and then right now i feel like we're, we've just been craving the intimacy the fully connecting kind of sex yeah i yeah i definitely go through phases too where like my genitals are sensitive or they're completely opposite like i've literally talked before how i can just not feel anything down there like it's so bizarre i don't know how to explain it so it sometimes takes that intimacy to make my mind connect to the genitals enough to actually feel them yeah the mindfulness is really important Uh uh-huh anyway it goes up and it goes down but not that we're not trying to like say that we don't have a good sex life we just like being honest with you guys we do have a good sex life it's just it's up and it's down and i think that's what creates a good sex life knowing that it's not the same all the time and we can talk about it talking about it um and understanding the differences of what the different types of sex that we have with each other Mm -hmm. i think that's what creates a healthy sex life i agree and honestly sometimes like having to film content creates it creates it for sure like forces us yes it's forcing us to do it but then it it sparks something exciting for us and then it just kind of like continues from there so i'm actually grateful that we have to make content because it does it just like the more sex you have, they say, the more sex you have, the more sex you want to have. Mm-hmm. So, and especially right now, when we've been, we have been so busy and backlogged with content and prepping and scheduling, we haven't been having lots of uh, personal intimate time. But because we're prepping for uh, Shambhala, we're doing four videos in a matter of two days. 
that's a lot of videos. Like that's more than what we. It's been a while since we've had to push ourselves. Probably since last shop a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big trip. We usually do that a lot. So again, forcing us to becoming intimate again. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm also just excited to like, fuck it, Shams. Just be chill. That's nice. Yep. Not like you mean like not like recording stuff and. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just camping sex to me is always one of my favorites. I don't know why. Hmm. It just is. You did say that the last time we had sex. I know. There's something really like magical about it. Hmm. Every time we fuck in the trailer, it's just like really good. And so funny too, because like I remember the one or two years ago, our our trailer was right on the main pathway. Oh yeah. <laughs> right on the main dirt pathway at Shambhala. We had a five person orgy in that at nighttime while people walked. Yeah, and like you know what's right happening there. <laughs> Every you could see right in the window. The windows weren't even yeah, tinted at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. We, that's so funny yeah so we have a better spot now for sure but the trailer's also just like it creaky when we yeah, fucked when we went noise. camping last time we had to fuck super slow and i was sexual. like it's definitely it's yeah but i love camping sex maybe it's because i have less stress of what just in general when we're camping well in life in general yeah. so you can just feel more there. i can just be like yes that makes sense that would make sense i can just pew, yeah relax it's also oh. really nice in the trailer I know. It's just, it's just <laughs> the beautiful. trailer is it's good just vibes. Beautiful. It's just yeah. good vibes. Totally. Yeah. Um, okay. Advice going into a first threesome. Already yeah. covered. That's nice. the third one of this episode alone. Yep. Uh, where did you meet? Already answered. How long have you been together? September will be seven years for us. Mm-hmm. It'll so. be four years married. Three four years married. together. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. But that's the thing. I still feel so young. But when I reflect, I can remember the other day when someone asked us how old we were when we first met or something like that. I thought mm. I said like 24, 25 or I said 24 or something, but mm. it was more like 22, 23, mm. like early 20s that we met. But I still feel like it hasn't been that long, has it? It's crazy. It's been that long. Yeah. What are both of your family's opinions about the choice of work? Are they supportive? I mean, that's kind of been discussed too, but. Yeah. Briefly. Yeah. I don't speak to my mother anymore, uh, mostly due to her having an issue with that and then just causing Other like things. that yeah. break in our relationship. I told my mom last year or maybe a year and a half ago, supportive. I recently just told my dad, supportive. Surprising yeah. being the Asian parents, you know? <laughs> the Asian Catholic parents? like I know. What the heck? <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. But yeah, super grateful. And uh, mom is his mom. My mom. I, if I ever say mom, I'm now referring to James's mom. Uh, but yeah, she's she's now my mom. She literally said so. She's been th- with us through lots of yes. stuff. Yes. Yeah. And she yeah she wants me to call her mom. She likes it. So yes, it's great. Where do you guys live? We live in British Columbia, Canada. Have you been to Scotland? No, we have not. Thoughts on friend zone and if you can escape it. Mm. Um, that's tough. I've never escaped a friend zone yeah. and I've kept people in friend zones. Uh. As but, a uh, yeah, go ahead. I feel like I feel like time time would change. The length of time that you're in the friend zone might change things. Mm. Cuz what if you're say you're in a friend zone, a girl's putting you in the friend zone, 10 years go by and mm-hmm. she still doesn't have anyone. And then you've been in and out of her life as a friend. Mm. And maybe she's like, oh, wow, he's actually a really good guy. Maybe that will go. But that's like, I don't know how long it is, you know. Bridgerton, Colin, and, mm. and uh, Penelope, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. But I feel like short term, yeah. if someone's made up their mind that you're just a friend, it's hard to uh, it's hard to push beyond that. So, I'm trying to, like, think about myself in my younger state because I used to have a lot of, like, guy friends that I definitely did friend zone. Um nope i don't think so if you are to get unfriend zoned it would need to be like a big move on your part or theirs depending but mostly yours wait what like just something that happens to them might change the way they view the person that they friend zoned but it usually is yeah the person that's becoming the friend that would have to take action so the person that's been friend zoned, mm-hmm. I think, needs to make a big move. Yes. Or if a life changing thing happens to the person friend zoning that person, yeah. that could create it too. But but what you're saying is right. I do lean on that side more for sure. Yeah. Like they're looking at you as a friend. Do something that's going to change that point of view. But that's hard though because you could do anything and, and 
they they view you a certain way already you know it's hard to change their view yeah i just mean like something along the lines of like but you here's the thing people are like well i don't know if it's worth risking the friendship then don't then fuck the friendship but then. <laughs> in my opinion yeah if you're curious about it and you really want to find out like straight up if hey, you want more i've yeah. always had feelings towards you i love our friendship but would you give me the opportunity to take you out on a date and see if there's sparks beyond a friendship yeah otherwise you're just limiting yourself and you waste your time and granted i know like in your mind you're probably like oh but i'd rather even if it's just a friend it's just nice to have them in my life but you're limiting yourself. If you love that person and you want more, but you know that's not going to be get beyond that, that's a trap, right? But that's why I'd say, what if things part ways? Mm. 10 years go by, yeah. you guys link back up. You're a different person. She's a different person. Things yeah. could be different. Yeah. Which is why I think time is like the, the, the variable here. Yeah. What type of festivals do y'all like? Just EDM or would you do a jam band, metal or ren fair? I'm just an EDM girly, to be honest. Yeah, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd go to any other type of festival, yeah. other than EDM. I think EDM festivals are just different, and I think camping, like camping festivals, hit very different as well. Yeah, I don't want to have to deal with like cabs or rides to and from hotels. It's not my jam. I really enjoy just camping. And you know, obviously, we're very biased with Chambala because yeah. we drive there. Like it's close to us. Yeah, we can pack everything we need. We don't have to fly. It's mm -hmm. great. But also, I am definitely a music person. Like, yes, it's the experience for sure, but I'm heavily invested in the music when I go to festivals. If I'm not dancing, I'm bored. So, I don't know. I'm metal? I don't think so. I'd go to a metal show. Exactly. Very different. I wouldn't different. go to a festival. Mm -hmm. That would be too much metal for me. Um, but yeah. Just wanted to say you guys are great. Thank you. How did you guys meet? We already answered that. Oh, another one. How did you guys meet? Oh, that's so funny. How do you find good sex slash swingers clubs? I don't know. I've never been to one. Have you? No. <laughs> uh, my partner is pretty vanilla and not being mean. Wait, whoa, this is the wording. My partner is pretty vanilla and not being mean. And I want to try out getting pegged advice. I'm simply not going to answer that because you need to learn how to form sentences. Next. Do you ever feel embarrassed or insecure when filming? Yes. Embarrassed for sure. I've done some pretty like cringe things. Definitely. Looking back at my old content, super duper embarrassing. I think in the moment, the only time that I really ever feel embarrassed and never in our content together, cause that's like more authentic. But like when I do content, my, cause I have my Mandy cat. So I do solo content on that page. There's only so many times I can like authentically fuck myself. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to get creative with things. And that's where, in my opinion, I get a little embarrassed because it's not like my style. But I'm just trying to like expand what I do or cater to people. So yeah, sometimes I'm like, you know, pretending to be this teacher who's going to like swallow her children. And like, it's a little bit embarrassing and cringy. But I, but at the same time, I know how many people are going to love it. And so I have to just remind myself that like I'm doing something that other people are going to appreciate, even if I don't appreciate it. But yeah, it can be a little bit like, ooh, this isn't me. How about you? No. How about when you filmed your solo video? I wasn't embarrassed doing it. Insecure? No, it's more about like being um, vulnerable, putting it online for people to see, mm. but not, not doing it. I think that's a big difference with you and me because like you you've been in situations where you're kind of like i don't want to i don't want to say force but yeah when you're playing lots of roles i used to when i did custom content exactly you do it a lot so you're more accustomed to that yeah even when we have sex on camera and when i have sex with other people i i don't like i i might act but it's generally just me being myself yeah. and doing a little bit more yeah uh, you're not playing a whole character yeah it's like when 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 you watch an actor in a movie and you're like that's just them being them mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. when actors be like oh it was it just felt so like me like that's who i am i'm not i'm not, I'm not role playing i'm not doing anything different i i have to be myself otherwise i feel like i couldn't actually work that's true so that's true yeah, I don't really do custom content anymore, and I'm happy that I don't. I take requests for ideas or concepts, but I don't, like, do the whole, say a whole speech anymore. Back in the day, people used to be able to get custom content from me where, like, I would say their name. And honestly, that was the hardest one for me. It actually just made me feel icky inside. Like, I don't 
I don't want to be saying somebody else's name while I'm coming. Like that's it's just weird. But it wasn't necessarily like insecure or embarrassed. I, it just made me feel like ick. So that's why I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. But I'm happily taking like ideas for stuff. I just don't make it like so specific where where some people would give me like a whole script of things they'd want me to say that I would literally never say. So I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Yeah. So if you're really interested in our page or her page, like kind of expect that. We just got a review of our Oh, of yeah. Our somebody page gave recently. us a Reddit review. A really good review. But yep. that was like the one um, gripe that they had yeah. that we weren't like catering into that parasocial uh, yes. role playing thing. But that's just not that's just not us. Yeah. So, we're not. We're not on there like sexting to try to like milk you for your money. Yeah. That's not what we do. I used to do sexting and every once in a while I have some special people who will ask it and I'm like, all right, fine. But I'm not sitting on there sexting with everybody, like milking everyone for your five cents. You know, like we charge a flat rate to see our stuff. We post four new videos a month on each page and it's plenty of content. You can still talk to us, but I'm not going to sit there and be like, Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. Come Stroke on, your daddy. cock for me and show me a video. Like yeah. I'm not gonna do that because it's not what we're doing. Yeah. Um, um, but there's lots of other people that do do that. So well, find those their, people. Their management does that. Find those people that uh, if you enjoy that. Reading that review back maybe really think about like. Yeah. I mean, but damn, like so we, we, I know we cater to a specific demographic, but we definitely it made me think that our demographic is even more narrower now. Yeah. Now that that review came in, I'm like, oh, we don't actually do that. It's crazy, it's, but some people enjoy that. This is not our jam. See, and to me, it just seems very like m- money grabbing, like pushy. But also, I, I guess I've just never been on the receiving end because I think as a content creator, and I have subbed to some people's pages, do you really think that somebody with a bunch of followers is actually sitting there one-on-one flirting with you? Do you know what I mean? Like, I just, because I know that that's not what's happening, I don't really want to be doing that to people or pretending like that's what's happening. Because there's no, like, people aren't just sitting on their page one-on-one, like, flirting with you for no reason. They either want money out of you or they're mass messaging people the exact same thing and trying to get money out of everyone. Or it's not even them and they have a hired team who runs their page 24-7 and will reply to you 24-7 again to try to get more money out of you. That's the whole thing. So, to me, I I don't really understand why people want that, but... Or you might get lucky with a a smaller creator that loves that kind of thing like the girl that gave us the review for example she loves the storytelling thing she builds it up for her fans mm. i don't know how many followers she has but she does it all on her own still mm. and but i think it's very niche i think it's very uh very rare uh and you'll have to like really do your shopping to find the people like that mm. but you'll know right away if someone's um has a has a managing team behind them or not yeah as soon as you start interacting with them yeah, it's, it's the hard thing when you switch over to doing like no pay-per-view as well, right? Because we charge a flat rate to see all of our content for the most part. We only get the money out of subscriptions. So we have to spend a lot more time on social media getting people onto our page rather than like sending out messages, messages asking for tips, selling being stuff. flirty. Like that's not... So we only really go on our page a couple times a day. We reply to messages, but we're not on there 24-7 trying to like get more money out of people i think being a couple in the industry as well and and like actually marketing ourselves as a couple as an industry yeah created that as well totally because we're not out here pretending like we want to like come to your house and fuck like we're not yeah we're we're you might feel that way because you see us have sex with other people yeah but it's definitely not the case so really for us as long as you just enjoy seeing us have sex and seeing us have sex with other people yeah if you like that, get on our page. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And yeah, also like I do think maybe we should do more role play stuff. It takes specifically. It takes like months, almost though. convincing for us to do it because it's just not our style. But I know the couple times that we have done it, we do enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Like with the Halloween one, that was really fun. I think all in all, I did enjoy getting that review though, and it did open up our eyes. And I do think we'll probably do a couple, couple things different. But yeah, but don't expect us to flirt with you. <laughs> Well, like, I'll flirt, but yeah, I'm not, but not going gonna... to, like, get dirty sexting with you. Like that one guy that messaged us last oh, night. Oh, man. Holy crap. That was that was overwhelming for Sent, me. Sent, like, 10 videos of him masturbating and coming. And I was like, I don't know what you want me to say to this, man. Like, I'm sitting here in my fucking pajamas at 11 o'clock at night ready for bed. <laughs> like, I'm not going to pretend like I want to fuck right now. Like, I don't. So, yeah, I don't know. I think we're just different that way. We're just... 
We're just real, man. <laughs> what even was that question? Jesus Christ. <sighs> when do you plan to come to Hawaii? I don't know, because there was a lot of shit that went down, and I also just didn't really, like feel it was appropriate to go to Hawaii, you know? And I still don't know how I feel about it, in all honesty. Like, I would love to have gone years ago, but I don't know. Hawaii, I have mixed feelings about, not because of Hawaiian people at all, because of everything else. That's a good one day, but... Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever leave Canada? Yes. Like, for good? Yeah. We leave Canada all the time. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we travel all the time. Would we ever leave Canada, honestly? Like, with shit uh, lately i've been it's shitty everywhere i know around the world but okay? i fantasize about leaving sometimes but where we live is beautiful i enjoy where we live um yeah. leaving for good i don't know about that we'll leave for good when we actually die and leave for good <laughs> <laughs> then i'll be a lion in africa how long have you guys been together i love you guys we answered that and thank you your most intimate experience with each other one that you cherish to this day Oh, man. You're asking for the most intimate? That's hard to answer. After seven because, years of being together? Yeah, because, like, you know, like, some some memories get replaced by other memories. But, and like, have... the, first mo the first intimate memories might be the most intimate because those are the first intimate moments. But then we have bigger intimate moments later in the relationship that might get replaced by those feelings. But, you know, like, the first times you took me out to the festival rave community mm -hmm. we got really intimate with each other because also first time experiencing it like those memories for me were really very very intimate right mm -hmm. but then we have other intimate moments now like and that's so that's so long ago at this point so it's, it's hard to like um it's hard to uh yeah put it on a scale and what do you consider intimate too because for me james is one of the only people that has ever like actually asked about like my upbringing my my trauma my all of that so to me that's very intimate because i think you can ask it as subjectively as you want it to be yeah like i've never had anyone ask me to go so deep and it f was so refreshing to be able to like let that out to someone it was like wow he just like learned so much more about me that no one no one really knows so yeah i don't know yeah my mom was, was even sexual true so it doesn't have to be sexual or whatever it's yeah whatever it's, it's subjective into me is intimacy is subjective mm-hmm I couldn't tell you the most, though. No. That'd be too hard. Yeah, it is. But it's the same way we don't like to answer questions about favorite. It's just yeah. like, it's so, I can't. I just can't. I don't pick and choose. I like them all. Yeah. How do you open up a... How do you open up with... Oh, mama. How do you open up a conversation with your partner about scenes you want to try without feeling embarrassed? Like, it sounds like they're asking us specifically. Because scenes, they're talking about scenes, not just like sex. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. I think they just mean sex. sex? But oh. they're just saying scenes because probably we refer to our videos as scenes. It's like maybe they've watched some stuff and they want to try it. I don't know. Or they're a content creator. I have no idea. Uh, how do you open up a conversation? Well. Nike, baby. You just do it. <laughs> I was like, what? You just do it. Yeah. Ah, man, yeah. I just... Not during the time that you want to be doing it either. Like, it's just, you need to have the conversation at an appropriate time. Yeah, when things are going good, when things are feeling good, those yeah. are always best time to have conversations. But, like, that's it. You yeah. just do it. Yeah. And hopefully you have a partner that's trusting enough that can take it in. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing. But you should know that in your partner right now. If you're having reservations about asking your partner these things, that's something right there. That's yeah. telling you something that you guys don't have open communication. If you're nervous right? That nervousness of telling your partner is a wall. So yeah. that has to be discussed. Why are you feeling that way? But other than that, if that's not there, you should be able to tell your partner anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, a really easy way to start would be to say to your partner at some point during the day, like, hey, I would love to have a conversation about our sex life. Let me know when you're mentally prepared for that or when you find the time today or tomorrow that you want to sit down and talk about that. That way they're kind of like, now that it's going to be a heavy conversation or like a, you know, an intense conversation, they can choose when they're ready for it. You could preemptively say like, it's nothing bad. It's just, there's some stuff that I want to talk about or maybe try and, you know, pre-emphasize that way. But yeah, we just got to talk about it. How to get past health risk concerns so I can enjoy sex without fear. 
That's a very vague question. Yeah. But I would say you need to speak to your doctor. Like you should be almost BFF with your doctor when it comes to stuff like that, you know? Don't be ashamed to talk to your doctor about your sex life and your health concerns and things that you might have to think about when it comes to sex and your health concerns. Your doctor should be more than willing to have those kind of conversations with you. Because if not your doctor, then who? Yeah. And willing to have those conversations with the people you're being sexual with. Yeah, exactly. Not a question, but I just wanted to say that you guys are amazing. I love listening to you. Such nice people. Thank you. Why is everyone so nice? I know. Who are each of your favorite people to work with besides each other? Again, like I just don't like to answer favorites. Yeah, because like we've enjoyed working with everyone. Everyone yeah. brings something different to the table. Mm-hmm. So obviously working with some people goes smooth, more smooth than others. Mm-hmm. But then it's also a rapport thing. Like the more you work with someone, the, the better it gets. So you can say, so you can say the oh well we Jesse Switch is the best because but we've also worked with her the most and we're also just so open with her right like yeah it's 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 hard to even yeah it's hard to put it in 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 the grade you know mm-hmm. yeah I don't really want to like I don't really want to list people like that because I don't want to accidentally leave people out and we've worked with a lot of people and if we've if you've ever seen us work with them more than once you know that we like working with them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jesse, of course. Yeah, but, but also Jesse's in Canada, so it's easier, right? To work with her more frequently. But also we're both just the same. Like we're so... I'm just saying some people are in the States and oh. we love some people in the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we can't work with them as frequently because we're yeah. very limited in traveling. Yeah. You know? Yeah, we've just, yeah, we've built a really good connection with Jesse and she's open and also driven and mm-hmm. we just we just work well together in general. Yeah. But yeah, I... We've worked with a lot of really amazing people, so. Try to say something in German, please. Nine. What's that? No. <laughs> I said I said that joke last time someone said something like that to you on the podcast. I mean, if you pulled up a sentence for me, I could try, but. Uh, what was your favorite part of your Toronto trip? Pride. Yeah, like, I agree. It was a lot. It be- It became a lot. We were only there for a few hours, but like, it was really cool. That was my first like pride parade. Same. Pride event, pride, pride thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, it was really cool. It was really awesome. Took lots of cool photos and yeah, got to experience uh, pride in a bigger city. Mm-hmm. Do you ever come to Saskatchewan? I'd love to do a photo shoot for you. I've never been. I don't think I plan to go. Alberta's far enough, man. <laughs> I always say like Saskatchewan and Manitoba like just don't exist in my brain when it comes to Canada. They're just I don't know, man. I just don't ever plan on going there. Like I said, Alberta is far enough. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Us West Coast live live livers yeah. are just yeah, so biased here. <laughs> Least favorite tattoo? I mean, I guess it would have to be my left arm sleeve, but that's just because it's my like oldest and it's like the least matching to the rest of my body. and I, But I don't hate it. I just, I'm kind of like indifferent about it. And if I run out of space, that will be the first one that will either get lasered off or blacked out or redone or something. But yeah. Yeah, my least favorite is probably just my chest just because I wish I would have done something more symmetrical right away. Yeah. But again, not like I hate it. Yeah. So. What type of animals have you had? Also, I love the podcast and you and James are awesome. These are coming off my Mandy Cat one now before they were from the Family Standards page. So first of all, thank you. What type of animals have you had? Do you want to go first? Dogs, cats, fish. That's it. That's it? Yeah. I've had a hamster. I've had a guinea pig. I've had fish. Oh, dagoos. I had dagoos. Bunnies. Horses dogs do you have chickens chickens wow i think that's it oh bearded dragons oh yeah and technically you could say crickets because i was breeding crickets for a bit for the bearded dragons but i don't know they were getting eaten are those pets no (laughs) yeah i think that's it that's a lot do you plan to do a vr scene i mean we've talked oh i forgot about this i've been looking into it okay because i think I think my program can can like create VR. So I always thought we need to do like a VR system to create VR. 
Yeah, I thought we'd have to go to like a place. But I I kept forgetting to look into it when I'm editing stuff. But I think my program might be able to just create VR. Well, so, then we should try it. Yeah, we should try it. We'll just need to do like a POV scene and then, yeah, put it into. Cool. I know. So. I don't even, like, I don't know how any of that shit works. I don't well, understand VR is, it all. It's, it's like a double screen. It basically has two displays for each eye when you put it on, essentially, I think, something like uh. that. So it just morphs, it just morphs the, the video into VR it compatible. It looks more real. Well, no, it doesn't look real at all when you actually watch it with, not in their VR. Um, so, yeah. It, can they touch the, you and stuff in it? Well, no. It's just it's just virtual reality. It's just, you're, just, you're just watching a video. I but think I just don't know. I don't understand what virtual reality is. You're just watching. It's like watching porn VR goggles. But you're, you're just, not. You just feel like you're the person. Okay. Because you're watching it from their point of view. I thought it would be like, you know, you could see your hands touch them and stuff like that. No. I mean, that would be like a VR porn game or something like uh, that. But. Huh. Okay, well. Yeah, but well, we'll look into it. I've been, I keep forgetting, like, I thought about it twice already, just looking at my program. Cool. What made you want to have a split tongue? Um, When I first saw it, when I was, I don't know, a teenager, like 13 or something, the alien guy, the guy that's covered in tattoos, his eyeballs are tattooed, and he has a split tongue. I just thought he was cool. And then that was basically it. I just needed to wait until I felt like I was, like, moderate enough for it, because I thought it was, I thought it would be weird. That's been like that the whole time. I was waiting for you to notice. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, we could have put our awards back up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just waiting until I was modded enough because I per- I personally think it's a little bit bizarre to be like not heavily modded to some degree and then have a split tongue to each their own. I just, I needed to be a certain level before I did that. So, yeah. <sighs> Where do you buy your outfits from? Uh, in general? Hmm. Mostly ASOS. I talked to my best friend growing up and he was like you still shop from there i'm like yeah dude i do i do i just like the uk fashion so when it comes to regular clothes asos other than that i don't know any like any place that sells a lot of clothes at the mall (laughs) yeah nothing specific like urban planet if it's local yeah uh to be honest i shop on shein a lot it is what it is we literally our washer and dryer is not our own we're like we don't own this house it's james's dad's house so our washer and dryer tends to destroy clothes more than it tends to wash and uh i'm not going to be somebody that invests into expensive clothing until we have our own situation where clothes do not get ruined would you rather dress as mortal Kombat? my mm, i think they spelt it wrong melina melina or katana I've never watched it. They're all hot. Would do both. I mean, if you know Melina, I don't know if you'd think she's that hot when she takes off her mask. Really? <laughs> yeah. Katana's in blue, I think. I actually play Katana a lot in Mortal Kombat. I really enjoyed... I think she plays with... She, she fights with fans, like sharpened fans. Katana has... Um, I mean, and Melina have like uh, those... Yeah, but if you take off her mask, she's, search Melina without her mask. Oh, God. Oh shit! <laughs> that? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. That's cool though. It is cool. That's cool. Melina or Katana is the blue one, right? I think Katana's the blue one, and she she has long hair. Well, usually, and she fights with fans. I think. I see that. I don't yeah. know. They're both cool. I like Katana, but I've played with Katana before. Maybe we'll do a, a Mortal Kombat cosplay or something. And we'll pretend to fight each other. But we'll just You're going to be one of them too? I could be, yeah, easily. Hot. Yeah. I'm into it. Let's do it. I could be, I could be Scorpion. Come here! <laughs> I have to wait for my cosplays until this isn't my hair, because now I can't even wear hats. So I screwed up. I actually had a bunch of cosplays that I meant to do mm, while good. I had my short hair. but it'll, it'll come around again. Yeah. Uh, summer or winter? <sighs> Both. Summer. I had to choose. I I get excited more. There's more things in yeah. summer that I'm excited about. That's true. Summer, fine. Summer. Why are you so gorgeous? Oh, why are you so sweet? Thank you. Would you guys ever do live calls in for the podcast? I thought about that. We've actually talked about that. Getting a Discord thing going on. Mm-hmm. Maybe building a Discord crew. But I'm not really familiar with Discord, so I'd have to sit down and really learn. And then having to be able to set up the Discord chat so it can record on the live stream at the same time um 
I don't need to figure that out. But there's potential there. I've thought about that. We discussed it before. It's just a lot of things I would have to learn in order to get to that step. But I think it'd be cool to maybe do like a... The, the hardest part would be to monitor it. Like I think, wouldn't do live. I'm not going to lie. Thank God this isn't live. But but like our podcast isn't live. Mm. But if we had a guest on and we could, if they weren't really vibing, we could just hang out with them. But it'd be interesting. I don't think I'll ever do anything live, to be honest. Uh, the the world of fucking counter culture and bullshit is just like way too much, and my anxiety is too high for that shit. But it was it'd be more of a like it'd be like a Q and A, but people could just ask us on the call and reply to it yeah that's it if they're good yeah, yeah what if, if you good. answer it and they're just fucking assholes well that's why i think discord you can have moderators in discord as mm. well like you can choose the people that that are, are gonna call you mm. like because even like tiktok lives and shit like that like that's stressful man mm -hmm. but i don't understand how to have a moderator people are always like oh let me be your moderator but i'm like i don't understand how this shit works I don't really want to have a teammate. I'm kind of just a solo dojo. So like asking for help with that kind of stuff freaks me out for people I don't even know. I personally think it would be cool. It, it would add another layer to things and it could just be no different than people sending an email. Mm -hmm. Like those people that are sending emails. You can tell those are like real genuine people that actually want our help. But now they can actually ask us live on mm -hmm. a call. We can answer them live and they can respond back with their feedback right away. I think it'd be a cool, I think it'd be, it could be a potentially cool thing. We just have to look deeper into how to set everything up. All right. I'm going to let you be in charge of that then. If we ever get there. How are you so cute? How are you so cute? How did you get your start in the industry? What would you have done differently? Oh. Well, I mean, when I started, it was just me at the time. I guess I got my like... I wouldn't even call it a big break, but like my success came from TikTok back in the day. What would I have done differently? Start earlier. Well, yes. That's like the one thing I could really say. Otherwise, I wouldn't change anything. Start but starting earlier. earlier. I have one thing. I don't know. Have we talked about the one traumatic experience that happened at the very beginning that like almost put a giant wedge between us? I mean, it didn't, but yeah, I remember it. It was hard. Have we talked about it on the podcast? Uh, I don't think so. I was thinking about talking about this actually because... Um, you would have done that differently oh yeah you just end the call or not go not continue all of the above i just wouldn't have done it okay you can tell the story if you want so kind of near the beginning i guess it was like basically the very beginning like two weeks or a yeah. week or two you just starting it i didn't know what i was doing we didn't have the best like boundaries set yet we just um, didn't understand anything because we just started. We didn't know how anything was happening. Yeah, I had somebody on my OnlyFans message me and ask if I would do a call with them. And I was like, no, I don't do calls. And then they offered to pay me, but after the call, and I was still like super suspicious. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then they were like, I'm going to buy out your Amazon wish list. At the time, my Amazon wish list was full of stuff we like really needed to start being content creators or to start doing what I was doing. It had like a bunch of cosplays and lighting and like stuff for my room. And I was really excited. I was like, okay, great. Yeah, like do that. And so he did. He bought out my Amazon wish list, showed it to me. It was like five or 600 bucks. And then I was like, all right, fine. I guess I'll do a call with you. But we had agreed that it would only be a call. He would be allowed to touch himself, but that was it. Like I wasn't going to touch myself. And yeah, I don't even know if we set a time to it. Oh, I think we did. I think it was two minutes or something. Anyway, I don't know why, but I completely let this man trump right all over me during this call. I like, he broke the rules that we initiated. He was like begging me to take my clothes off and to touch myself. And uh, it went over the two minutes and he was like, no, just another minute. Like I haven't come yet. Just the stupidest shit. And um, yeah, he just made me do stuff that I didn't want to do that I shouldn't have done we hadn't discussed if it was fine or not and you know it, it made me feel yucky after it made him feel yucky after and then the motherfucker went and canceled all of my amazon so yeah that was really shitty what would i have done differently i just wouldn't have done that in general i don't know how people do the whole call thing uh, i think that's probably why people do sites like chatterbait like live streaming just not our thing yeah, I just hear a lot of horror stories about people like sending an e-transfer and like canceling it, sending money this way and then canceling it. Like, yeah, but that's why you do those live chat, live 
chat websites but we just don't do that that's just not our yeah we just can't I, I couldn't do that there's just a lot of ways that people can get their money back if they really want to from stuff so you can get fucked over pretty easily and it, yeah it just made me feel uh really inferior just walked all over and um yeah it just wasn't good I mean, beyond that though because like yeah i mean that was just a bad experience overall that could have happened now and still be a bad experience but it was more the fact that it was just just us starting out it wasn't supposed to be anything crazy it was supposed to be for super short yeah she just started doing only fans and all of a sudden you're doing a live chat with someone then all of a sudden you hear all these noises coming from the other room that lasted for five to ten minutes like that was a lot but like i said if that happened now he fucking scammed you shitty all around it was more the fact that at the beginning that was a lot of boundary pushing mm -hmm. that we just established if that happened now though i couldn't give a I fuck know, right? it wouldn't matter now boundary wise right like i mean i would now. still be upset if i got walked all over of course though, of course like yeah 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 that was just a story that i think i've purposely not told but i think it's an important one to tell just because like shit like that does happen yeah. all the time to people especially when you're first start starting out and you don't know any better yep when you're when you're relying on this to be your income yeah like you're, you're like oh well i need to do i need to do everything yeah i need to suck up in a way you know i've gotten to the point now where i just firmly believe that if it seems too good to be true it is and yep. maybe that's not the best mentality to always have keeps you safe but it does it, it keeps me safe so it just, it just goes to show you how how much our boundaries have come though because mm -hmm. even like even when that when that, that was happening when we're t talking about boundaries the biggest thing was like you know I have access to her OnlyFans. I need to see all the conversations you're having with this, with these men. And even watching your conversations with these men got to me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how crazy and different the boundaries were when we first started till now. Mm -hmm. Back then when I see you sex a guy, felt the same way as when I first started, you know, w watching you work with other men. Like those feelings are the same amount, but it just goes to show you like with trust, with with. Uh, compassion with discussions it, it it really elevates and it really changes over time mm -hmm. yeah anyway good question um i think we're basically at the end here this one is just how did you become so confident in yourself and other half when it comes to having it i don't wait what you kind of talked about that though the yeah, self confidence self-esteem yeah okay love yourself is what you said mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. okay that's it for me how many do you have i don't know yet oh Okay, so this is on Facebook from before. So I'm always hearing about your favorite or best scenes. What is something you would never do again? Hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I don't think I have anything, to be honest. I feel like if there was something I would never do again, I probably wouldn't have tried to begin with. And I probably wouldn't have, like, posted it either. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only thing is the thing that I've already said, which is just, uh like doing the extreme customs where it's like completely scripted from somebody and where they want me to like say their name constantly. I think I'm just never probably going to do that again. Yeah. Other know. than that, we kind of like everything. Yeah. Like even the foot stuff. It's not like my, my go-to, but like I, just, I liked it enough that I would do it again. Yeah. Both, both ways. Yeah. Totally. What would be your recommendations for people getting started in a form of sex work? I'd just say to know all the things that come along with that. Like to really think about it. The judgment of other people. Yeah. We've talked lots about this. I also just personally feel like if you have to ask how to start, then you're probably not meant to do it. That's true. Yeah. There's obviously some reservations. You can you can be worried. You can be scared. Yeah. But, but if you're asking and you haven't even started at all yet, like I just, yeah, I just don't know if it's for you, man or girl or whoever, whoever i think you're both absolutely amazing individuals and spectacular together i would love to hear more about your communication slash comfortability as a couple and how it has evolved it's so inspiring thank you i mean we kind of we kind of talked about it about that story totally you know, how i told you about it's evolved big, a lot it's evolved a lot and how it's changed how things that sap seem so big back in the day could seem so minuscule now mm -hmm. and i think that's just you know how to properly grow with a partner talk communicate mm -hmm. um talk about your expectations talk about your wants and needs i think that's all it really is and having a partner that's on the same page mm -hmm. helps in that yeah and also just like we've grown as people like we've grown a lot as people for sure uh and you know we're just we're understanding that that's a normal part of it and yep. we're growing together i thought about this the other day where 
when I was outside meditating and I'm just thinking about stuff. And I thought about that time where, where I was kind of managing the house and I had those tenants that were just awful and I had to have a discussion with them. If you guys keep fucking around, I'm going to kick you guys out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you guys your notice. And I remember that conversation being really big for me because that was the first time I really had to step up uh, and uh, have a backbone and represent myself in a certain way. And I think back about that. I'm like, it's funny that I was nervous for that because now I would do it in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when, when someone asks us like, oh, well, what has your partner taught you? Whatever all the time. I always said, you taught me to have more of a backbone. And to really think about me back in the day without one, I was like, man, I'm so different in that sense. Mm -hmm. I would definitely stand up for myself and for you, no problem. And I have for you at times when, mm -hmm. I, when it's needed now. Yep. You know? Definitely. He's obviously taught me patience and kindness and a lot of and a lot of things. I've taught him hard hard to be hard and he's taught me how be to be soft. soft. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Literally though. Yeah. But usually I'm I'm pretty hard in other areas. Like I'm I'm pretty hard. You're, you're all right. <laughs> I got that character. He's rock guy. hard, but he's soft. <laughs> That's so funny. With it being masturbation month last month, I meant to ask, but I'll ask now. How do you get over the voices in your head telling you no and just go for it? My husband is very encouraging. We've tried everything. I just can't bring myself to do it. It's a stigma that's bad or dirty. Meanwhile, I do way worse things with and to my husband, so I don't understand why I can't do this. I'm 35 with two kids and been with the same man for 18 years, but I can't masturbate. I can't get out of my own head. Help. I feel that. I do. I don't know why, but I have a really hard time with it when he's in the house. Still. I still do. Because it's still that weird guilt thing. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I don't feel guilt on my own. I don't know. I don't know if it's just because it's like privacy and like nobody knows about it. No one has to know about it. But yeah, I think, I think as a society, we've been not just masturbation as a society, we've been taught that sex is something that we shouldn't talk about and that we should hide mm -hmm. and be, be guilty of or for doing. Mm -hmm. And that's just sex as a whole. So then you take masturbation, self-pleasure, that just that just makes it feel even worse. Multiply that feeling by 10. I think it's like, it, it's it's like not hardwired in her brain, but it's been so um, reinforced that it's a guilty thing to do. Or if you're caught masturbating, like it's such an embarrassing thing. Like, mm -hmm. so of course you feel guilty, but like anything, I think the only thing you can do is with your partner, have a trusting partner, discuss, have these conversations and be reinforced with positive um, experiences. Yeah. Otherwise, there's no way of getting out of it because your head, the voices in your head are always going to be there. Yeah. I, I, maybe, though, he sounds like he's very supportive and he's like encouraging you to do so. But did you mention kids? Uh, two kids. Yeah. I would say if there's any way that you can have some alone time with like nobody home or for you to like, I don't know, book a book a nice little hotel for yourself, go enjoy a dinner, go enjoy the pool and then enjoy yourself for a night to like really explore without having to worry about everything else in life. Maybe that would help you. Cause I personally feel like the thoughts of life really overtake really quickly. And then you just want to give up and move on because you just can't concentrate enough. So yeah, I don't know, maybe that would help. Hope that helps. Mm -hmm. I will make a comment on this Facebook thread saying that we've answered these questions. So hopefully you listen to the episode. I still didn't reply to the emails and tell them we did it. I'm so bad. Craziest sex thing that you want to do with and without your spouse. I don't really think in this way. Mm. I really, yeah, I don't, I couldn't even answer you. I really don't think in this way. Yeah. I mean, I think one day in life, it would be nice to experience like a sex party. That's true. But I also don't know that I can picture it in a way that I would actually do it when I think logically about it. Like I'm so, I need people to be tested, safe. Like there just really isn't the, I don't know, man. I just don't know if there would ever be a situation in which I could let go enough. To yeah, but say all those things were checked off. Then totally. With, by yourself, with me. Oh, with you would be great. I think it'd be really great. I think I it'd agree. be great to go. I think it'd be great to watch together, to do stuff together to do stuff with others to like watch each other i think all of that would be really awesome if yep. everything was aligned i agree for that yeah and that's like the only thing that really comes up i guess because otherwise everything else we just do together mm -hmm. i don't think about doing things on my own 
Um, I just want to say I've been following you guys for a while now, and you guys are the best. Listening to the podcast has helped me grow and better my communication with my partner. Thank you guys so much and keeping you. Yay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just hearted that comment. That's lovely. You were making content in various scenes, toys, positions, extra people, etc. Do you feel that vanilla sex, i.e. bedroom with just two people, is too boring for you or think it's too boring for your viewership and content? <laughs> we love that shit. No. Yeah. Um, sometimes we do feel like we just can't do it all the time as our content because we're trying to cater to all of our subscribers, which isn't just one or two people, right? Like, uh, but no, I love vanilla sex. Yep. We always say we're we're actually quite vanilla. We're very like lovers when it comes to sex. I'm like I would way rather be thrusted like deep and slow and passionate than like jackrabbit. And, you know. We've also just been talking about how we lately we've been needing more connecting sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think as life goes on, that's a fundamental part of it. Anyways, as a whole. Mm-hmm. Uh, where do you see yourselves in ten years? What's your life goals? Where do you want to travel next? Well, shit, are you my new therapist? Because, damn, that was some of the homework I got sent home with. I think in 10 years, we're just continuing this, but doing it better. Um, Feeling better about life as a whole. Life maybe hopefully feeling less busy, less convoluted. Things are more streamlined. Life goals, we talk about owning a house, maybe only multiple properties um, at certain areas of the world. And then where do you want to travel next? I mean, there's lots of places. Vietnam's on the list. I still want to go to Japan. Japan. Um, those are basically my tops. Otherwise, we'll go back to places where we've enjoyed, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, mean, I know you say you want to go to Thailand. I Maybe mean, we'll do Thailand one time. I mean, I loved Thailand. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I just feel like we can't travel like that yeah. until our life is it's a little less busy and more yeah. streamlined. Totally. Otherwise, the only times we're traveling is like to for relax work and stuff. or for work. Yeah. But with backpacking across a certain place for three to two months at a time, it just doesn't seem doable right now. No. We have four cats. Yeah. I also don't think I'm quite as crazy as I was when I was 18 backpacking through Thailand. I don't think any of us were as crazy as back in the day. I stayed in some pretty dank-ass places, and I was super cool with it. I don't know about that now. Any advice on how to actually get with someone else? No one else turns me on because all I want is my partner. No one turns me on and the idea just doesn't do it for me. He's a cuck though and wants to actually see it happen instead of hearing stories of past guys I've been with. Mm. I don't think you should have to fuck other people if you don't want to. Yeah, he's a a cuck and everything, but... I don't care. If you... No, no, no. I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying... Oh, sorry. He's a cuck and everything, but if it doesn't vibe with you, I think he should understand that that is something that he's probably not going to be able to get from you. Yeah. I don't think you should fuck other people just because your partner wants to. Otherwise, he's pimping you out at that point. He's just pimping you out. Yeah. You know? So, I think you have to have a talk with him. Here's the other thing that I'll add. Like, if you actually are genuinely like, actually, I do want to try this out. You know, I just, I'm asking how to be more into other people. Uh, You might not be able to just meet someone and fuck them. You might have to actually build Build a a bit bit of a relationship. And if if that's something your partner is super not cool with, then you guys definitely aren't vibing on this concept. Yeah. I say that's a good good place to start. And if he is cool with that, that is a good place to start. Because it sounds like to me, you and your partner have something deep. You've known each other for a long time. He's a cuck. He wants to see you get fucked by someone else. But you... You are a demisexual. You need to actually have a, a good connection with this person in order to have sex with them. Because you said the idea just doesn't do it for me, which mm-hmm. means you haven't even like, you haven't gotten the ball moving to really fully understand. So I think Amanda has a good point. Start there. But mm-hmm. if he's not into that, yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, I, I feel how you feel though, because I feel like as I get older too, my random sexual attraction to people just isn't very high. There's not a whole lot of people that I look at and I'm like, wow, I want to, I would fuck you right now. There's like like, no one for me because I'm, I'm a demisexual. I need to get to know you. I want to know your personality. That really, that, that your, your personality is really what decides my sexual attraction to you. I agree. Even when it comes to the industry with working with people, let's just give an example. Like if we got invited to um, a big collab house with a bunch of creators and I'm like scanning through all the people, if I don't know any of the people already from online or their whatever, their personalities online, I often don't feel like super enthused about the idea of going and fucking all these people because to me, they're just like 
they're just faces like i'm or they're just bodies like i'm not really like ooh, i want to fuck them but then as i get to know them more or after i've already met them at the house and i'm like ah okay now i want to fuck you i just think if you are open as a person you value that more mm-hmm. if you're closed-minded and you only care about really basic things you wouldn't care about that you mm-hmm. just a lay is a lay for you uh, you know having mm-hmm. sex is just having sex for you that's totally fine that's your jam find people that enjoy that but mm-hmm. yeah it's different what are your views on porn in the world specifically of consumption by men in place of real sexual connection how do you feel about your partner watching porn super interested in your takes of this topic given work in the industry much love you guys thank you for opening your living room to us all through the pod nice i'm gonna let you start that one this is always kind of an interesting topic because like you've lost friendships because of this yeah yeah i mean there's pros and cons to anything and everything and i think if you fixate your thoughts on the negatives of porn then yes you would view it as a very negative thing. And I'm not denying that there's lots of negative things in porn. There definitely is, especially in the Western world. Mm-hmm. Um, what you're saying is true. Some people in general do just rely on porn and they actually can't do anything other than porn. Mm-hmm. That's sad. I don't know what else to say about that. Yes, us doing this could be pushing that that idea a little bit. But us just being porn in general, if you view that way, could be doing that. But we also talk to lots of people in our industry and Mm -hmm. lots of our subscribers in our industry that have the complete opposite feelings of that. We got couples on our page. We got men and women on our page expressing really positive things about porn. Mm -hmm. So we see that side of it as well. Again, not denying that there is a negative side. It's just, yeah, it's 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 unfortunate. People abuse porn like they abuse any kind of substance. Mm-hmm. So they just need help for that. Yeah, I definitely, I view porn the same way I view substances. Uh, alcohol, weed. Obviously, it can be super toxic if somebody becomes addicted and it can, it can ruin people's lives. That doesn't mean alcohol is ever going to be discontinued. You know what I mean? It's such, exactly. a, it's such a big profiting thing. But if used in a good way, in a healthy way, okay, well, you want to have a couple drinks on a Saturday night. You know, you want to smoke weed a couple days a week, whatever it is. I don't think that there's a problem with that. The same way I don't think there's a problem with that being your porn situation. Now, if you start becoming somebody who literally cannot get off unless you're watching porn. Or I, needs to masturbate with porn even when you're at work or like yeah, yeah. five, six, ten times a day. Like that. that's when you... Th- Realize it's an issue. Exactly. When it starts becoming so easy that it takes away your need for human connection. Now, if you're somebody who is just single and you just don't have human connection, I don't think there's a problem with porn. But if it gets to the point where it's taking away like your desire to even want to connect with other people, I do think there's a bit of a problem with that. But yeah, we, we are a couple. So it's it's different because we already have our human connection. The same way we said that our toys, toys are great. It doesn't beat human sex. Human to human sex is just the top tier. Uh, and I would hope that people aren't forgetting that, you know? What else was I gonna say about that? Oh, I also just feel like, uh, yeah, sure, we could be like part of the problem, but we are trying to do porn in like an ethical way way. you know what i mean there's a lot of porn that's not ethical at all how people are treated just how fake things are you know what i mean we're not doing that and we're being honest and real with people and we're showing the real side of porn and yeah we're we're catering to everyone we have so many couples that watch us together and communicate with us i've talked on here before about people opening up to me about issues and having genuine connections with people or convincing a man, let's say, who sent me, I had a man this one time, send me a photo of his penis to get rated. And I genuinely had to tell him he needed to go to the doctor. He hadn't shown his penis to anyone. He didn't know. He had a medical issue, needed to go see a doctor. So I do, I like, there's there's pros and there's cons, but we're doing it in a way that I, I feel good about, so. Yeah, we definitely get like, um just pushed into the label of the negative porn world by lots of people that comment on our page that feel that way. Um, They don't know how we do things and they're like, you're part of the problem, but Mm -hmm. they're not looking beyond what we're doing. Yeah. 
Do you ever feel neglected by your partner in any way? No matter what I do, I feel that I'm always put last. Hmm. Sorry to hear that, friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, talk to your partner then. Talk to your partner why you feel that way. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's normal to feel that way in certain situations. Mm-hmm. I think it's normal for somebody to get wound up in something and have you not be their top priority in moments. It happens. It does totally happen. Especially longer in the relationship. Absolutely. Uh, it should be fine, though, to like, hey remember me over here like and then have it have you be top priority again or like up there on the scale but yeah if it's something that you're constantly fighting for and you've talked about and they're still not prioritizing you that's an ish Mm -hmm. for sure especially if you're prioritizing them and then they're not prioritizing you you know like it needs to be equal in that way i want to know the story to this one lots of them it's hard to know know. right Hope it gets better. Yeah, I wish you all the best. In your work with your partner, do you feel more of a deeper connection compared to when you first started out? And how do you think it's positively affected your love life? I absolutely love you guys. And I know that it's interesting to see you both so open with your communication. I rewatched many of your reels and I just love you guys. And I could imagine there must have been some times when you both had some reservations during the process of becoming who you are in this industry. Can't wait for the next podcast. Man, Facebook crew, man. Dang. How was the beginning of that worded? Because I got... your work with your partner, do you feel more of a deeper connection compared to when you first started out? I mean... I think our... I think our um, intimacy in the bedroom, no matter if it was work or just us, has just grown in general. Right. But has there been reservations? I mean, of course. We're married, living in the same house, also running a business together. There's always going to be reservations. There's always going to be like butting of heads, especially because like, yeah, social media is hard, you know, like sometimes we have to film stuff that we and we don't want to. Uh, It's not the easiest, but yeah, I mean, I think we've just gotten better at that and being able to speak up when we're not feeling in the mood instead of forcing ourselves to do it, too, Mm -hmm. which is which is good. So overall, it's been positive. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for answering these questions less and less, but I think we're both like... There's a lot to go through. Ready for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, it's 122. I haven't eaten anything yet. No. I need my coffee, damn it. How do you feel about BBW plus size body types uh, personally as well as in the porn industry? How do I feel about it? All bodies matter. BB, uh, big, beautiful women. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always forget what it stands for necessarily. I think like all the power to each type of person. Like we, I mean, we already said it. I'm a demisexual, so I feel like your personality, yeah. that's that's the main thing. But obviously, we mentioned lots of time, we're very athletic, fit people. Yeah. That's what we like. I'm in attracted physical body. to people who, t- who take care of themselves, are fit, you know, not like saying work that out. BBW people don't take care of themselves, but there is like a level of fitness that I do admire mm-hmm. in a human physically. Yeah, exactly. Not to say that I'm not interested in plus size people as well. We actually, I think we've worked with a good variety of body types. I agree. And enjoyed all of it. Exactly. But if you're asking me initially, my like, what is the word? My type, your go-to. Yeah, like my go-to type would be more of like a physically fit body. Yeah, but that's just who we're, that's who we are. So it just just makes sense in that sense. Yes. But yeah, definitely have been with all different types and as soon as I get to know somebody, I'm like, ah, you're great. Mm-hmm. So I think you're beautiful. If anything, being in the industry has melded and blended all of that more. Things are less judgmental. I feel that way. Anyways. I think, I mean, me growing up as a person, I've become, I try to become less judgmental. Uh-huh. Some of them judging other people. That's more of an indicator of how I'm feeling in myself. But also, yeah, being in the industry, being with lots of people has forced that. Like, yeah. In my reg- in our, in my regular life before the industry, I didn't really sleep with a lot of people to begin with, anyways. Yeah. So now that I'm exploring my sexuality with so many different types of people, it's just really created a a nice world where I just view people as people. You know? Yeah. Actually, I will. I'll add to this too. I think for me, it's really about the person's confidence. Yep. Because you could be Anything. very very plus size and walk in here with confidence, and I'll be like, damn. Damn. You could be super skinny and walk in here with confidence. Damn. If you're super skinny and walk in here and you're all embarrassed about how you look, 
that's just not hot it's not hot. and and vice versa if you walk in here and you're you know complaining because you're like oh i don't want to like i don't want to stand next to you in this you know because i don't i look too big man just rock it yeah, like it's own who you yourself. are it's how you are and if you're working on yourself in some shape or form then that's all that matters yeah right create that change that you want mm -hmm. and and show it yeah but yeah insecurity i think is just like the least attractive thing that's hard because like people are insecure right and everyone's insecure for different reasons but yeah. you have to work on it but how am i supposed to want to fuck you I know. when you're coming to the table with all these insecurities forefront for sure and i think in in general like fake it till you make it even if you're not super confident portray confidence the other person is seeing the confidence and then you just become confident because now you've portrayed confidence does that make sense yeah, i mean did you just say fake it till you make it yes yeah well, that's how it is yeah. always if you could pick any other profession slash career, nothing sexual or on film, to ensue, what would it be? Cat sanctuaries. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like okay, we answered Something this before. sexual, that's not fair. I'd do a little bit of music, but lately, like, as I've been really into photography again, mm. I don't know, maybe he's become a photographer again. Mm. Or at least a specific type of photographer. I feel like photography is a little, I've been thinking about this, photography is a little less committal than making music. Making music is hard work and it takes a long time. Just be your hobby huh music? making music would be your hobby yeah but i really like photography and like mm -hmm. yeah if i could chase it as a career that'd be cool too doing it my own way and not doing it for other people that was the hardest part mm -hmm. what's a kink or fetish that you guys have always wanted to do and make content for example bdsm or pegging hmm. we don't have many of these again we're, we're quite vanilla so the people that the stuff that we do that you might see this do it's usually been asked by our people yeah um i have a couple but since being in the industry, it's changed my opinion. This is also a big problem. <laughs> so, like, I used to have major fantasies about gangbang. Big time. Now, ah, I'd have to be so selective, and I almost guarantee I wouldn't enjoy it. I would like the idealization of it, but I almost guarantee I wouldn't like it. Um, same with... So, this is my number one biggest fantasy, and I actually heard somebody else talking about it um, not that long ago. I don't know what they're called. This is the problem. It's like a company that made these videos, but it was made to look super real. Anyway, it's like a you walk into a room and there's like a bunch of holes. Okay. So basically the guys, they pay the desk and they walk into this big open room and there's a bunch of places where they can either fuck or get sucked through these holes in the wall. They don't get to see the women on the other side. All they get to see is there's like a picture printed of the woman's face on the wall. So they can see and choose what they're going to do. And I remember I used to watch those videos and I, and so the camera angles basically look like a, look like a video camera into the room. So you can see from an above angle and then they have cameras in the room. So you can see the women also receiving on the other side of the walls. And yeah, I had no idea if this was like a club thing or if this was like real or not real but now i've learned that this is like a company and these are like videos that they make but that used to be like one of my top watched things i was young too and i used to have major fantasies about that but yeah i again thinking about it now i don't think i'd enjoy it <laughs> i'd enjoy the concept of it and the idealization of it and then i would do it and i'd be like this is awful yeah i mean if it was all actually properly tested yeah. all consensual everyone signed things everyone was a creator or whatever in that shape or form and then you get to role play that i know but what i'm still just gonna lay there and get fucked no kissing no lube i mean no magic wand but on my were, but, but you're interested in that whole concept as a whole yes so if, if you role played it maybe that will like true let you relive what you were feeling before true, true. What motivates you to keep moving forward with your careers when you can have so much negative feedback from people who don't understand or agree with you, uh, agree with what you guys do? P.S. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Uh, I think it's just because I don't care. I mean, I do sometimes, which I told you about, but that's a little bit different. For the most part, it's just like continuing because we're happy. Like it's giving us the life that we want and we're enjoying what we're doing and why quit something that you like? I don't know. Why fuck up a good thing <laughs> that's kind of how i feel yeah just living our lives the best we can not looking at the negatives not letting it get to you 
which is i mean it's easier said than done for people i guess yeah. but it's pretty easy for me and the more it happens the more i can just be like oh not even gonna finish reading it because yeah. there's no point i have an easy time accepting criticism when it comes to like stuff that we do what i don't have a good time accepting is people that come for my like me people who come for like me as a person and my god i'm lost for words character today. yeah like people that want to attack my actual character or my heart that's what hurts me because i'm like absolutely the fuck not because i know how good of a person i am deep down inside but people that want to come for like stuff that we do i don't care about that at all yeah i just i always go for the basis of and especially like in the online world but even in real life people that are spreading negative or hurtful messages are just showing the world that they're troubled mm -hmm. and then with that with that idea just locked in my head i don't worry about what they're saying mm -hmm. i don't worry about what they're thinking because it really doesn't matter yeah hurt people want to hurt people and then the last one how are your cats oh i'm gonna knock on wood before i speak i know cats are all doing great right now i say that because we're one week out from Shambhala right now. And if any of you guys remember last year before Shambhala is when three out of four of them were insanely ill and all in the vet and all medicated and having teeth pulled and all the bullshit. And yeah, we almost didn't go to Shambhala because of how shit that was. So cats are all great right now. We're one week away from Shambhala. Everyone seems fantastic. And everyone's going to remain fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. They're great. Period. <laughs> um, so I asked again today uh, questions. So we just save them for the next time. How many are there? Well, on Facebook, there's 23. <gasps> We're going to save them for another time. Okay. We're going to save them for another time. And then there's also Instagram. How many? I don't know. I haven't looked yet. I can check right now really quickly. Eight on podcast page i think we should save them okay we'll just keep them archived how long has it been how long is this it's a long time right yeah two and a half hours yeah no i'm done i'm done <laughs> okay no more we always do this we do q and a's and then and then we we ask for q and a's and then we 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 have no time so we save them for the next one and then when the next one comes around we decide to ask for q and a's again and then we you have more did that today. you do that sometimes too though i know so we both do but that i knew that we had plenty for today and then he put up more question boxes. I was like, fuck. That's okay, though. We'll just keep doing that. And then we'll have like a yeah, surplus yeah. of questions always. We had always said that if there was enough questions that we would always just do a small Q&A at the end of every episode. But this yeah. one was just like way too many. We were like, fuck, we're going to have a whole Q&A episode. It's just been a while since we had a Q&A. So <sighs> thank you guys for listening. Thank you. To one of the longer episodes that we had in a while. You're yeah, blessed. You're welcome. Literally my ears, like from these headphones. Oh my God. My ears hurt. We need food. But yeah, this episode will drop when we're at Shambhala. Mm. Wish us the best time. Mm -hmm. But when we come back, uh, when you see us the next time or listen to us the next time, uh, yeah, we'll be back from Shambhala. Yeah. And then we'll be also be back into work again uh, the best we can because we actually do have some work stuff planned with 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 lots of people. So I wouldn't say lots. I'd say lo I'd say always said lots because different types of people. And, okay. Okay. Yeah. I've actually been pulling back from a lot of collabs. If we're doing them, it's because I really, truly want to. So, yeah. Anyway, again, if you see us at Shams, please say hi. It actually frustrates me when people message after and being like, I saw you, but I was too shy. And then if you do see us, if you saw us at Shams, you should write to us so that we can talk about it. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. That'd be fun. Yeah. So, anyway, love, love you guys. guys. For family standards. Sex happens here. Have a wonderful day or Bye. night, wherever you are. <laughs> No, don't go, don't go, baby. You stay with mommy. Stay with mommy. No, stay with mom. I said so. <laughs> stay. You can nap right here. Take a nap on mom. It's always that same car, man. I know. Okay. There we go. Fuck. Fucking neighbors. What is that called?
car alarm? Car alarm was just going off and scared Hoodie. Now she wants to run away, so I'm trying to force her to stay. I don't know if it's going to work, though. Probably not. Fuck. 